After an exhilarating first series here, 2-1 goes the way of shutdown. Me and Woggy, we've sit back, we had our dares, we've cooled down, and we're coming into our second series here for the ESL AU and NZ Championship Season 4. I'm CNC, I'm joined here by Woggit. Man, how do you come down from a series like that? You don't, you don't, you don't calm down, you just keep going. That's it's just it's too much excitement in two hours. Well, speaking Honestly. of excitement, we do have our next series coming up, and it I will know. be I can't wait. the boys of Darkseid are going up against Infinity. Obviously, Infinity, uh, Darkseid were our invited team coming from last season because they did finish third, so they did extremely well. And Infinity, they did win their brawl invite up against Triad and Eastwatch, so unfortunately they won't be here in Stage 1, but Infinity will be. So they're going up against Darkseid. How are we thinking this one's going to go, Woggy? Honestly, Infinity have been playing better and better and better every single game I see them. So I, I want to give the edge to Darksided, but I think it's going to be very close, like a 55-45 kind of situation. Yeah, well, we'll have a look at our bracket. Obviously, the first series of the day, Shutdown Esports taking that 2-1 and an exhilarating best of three. So they're going to be moving on to play up against Atletico tomorrow, and Darksider versus Infinity will determine who's going to be playing in Zen 9 tomorrow as well. And as you said, Woggy, it's going to be an interesting one. It's going to determine who's going to be going up against Zen 9 here, but... I mean, I think this is going to be a really good showing by Darksider. Obviously, they're, I feel like they're a little bit of a stronger team. Infinity have had a few roster changes since last season, and Darksider have pretty much stayed the same. So I feel like them being in the top three, top four teams of Australia, they can really start putting yeah. it to Infinity game. And, right? and they definitely have something to prove. Yep. Like, there's been a few tournaments where Darksider have looked so strong just to face up in the finals and semifinals and then completely collapse. So I think this season, they're really going to use this whole... We've got two chances. The first chance, we're going to all in. We're going to just play our game. We're going to play as much, as hard as we can. And that's what I'm expecting today. I'm expecting them to go all in, have a really clean, prepared strat, and just go that two games in a row. Yeah, I feel like Darksider can... They just kind of put a lot on Reverie, right? Like, he, he's... I feel like he's a, he's a stronger mid laner than what Philo is. Obviously, Philo is quite a high MR player himself, but in the kind of competitive setting, Reverie is one of those players, right? You put him he's on a hero stable. like OD, put him on a hero like Husker, and he can really start taking over a game. And I think Darksided, they really do rely on that quite a lot. And against a team like Infinity Gaming, where they can start abusing some of these uh, side lane matchups, they can really make a lot of space for Reverie. Yeah, definitely. The biggest thing with Philo rules is his hero pull so strange, I think is the word for it. Like, you're not going to see a Clink's mid often, but if it is, it's Philo rules every single time. Um, Reverie might not be prepared for that kind of strat, though. Like, he's used to very stock standard, very traditional matchups. Like, that's why he loves that Invoker. We've seen him play Storm Spirit a lot. Even though that hero is a bit on the wayside, he'll still play it. He's just used to those traditional mids because that's what he's practiced so often. Yeah. Well, is there any kind of star heroes, uh, star players you want to see from Infinity Gaming really stepping up if they can try and get this uh, this series up against Darkseid? I, I want to see Woody Mo go absolutely ham. I, I know we talked about cut and paste being like a really hard, heavy farming player. Woody Mo is basically the same, but he's still unproven. Similar to cut and paste, pretty much the same story. I think Woody Mo has a lot to prove this tournament. Because he's he's played he's had flashes of brilliance, and they've been followed by pretty pretty terrible blunders. Like we've seen him go games with zero and nine PA, and then the next game go twenty one and two. There's yeah. just nothing in between. Yeah, well that feels like uh, Infinity Gaming can really rely on Woody Mo to try and come in and, and burst out some of these heroes. And I feel like it's kind of the same for uh, for Dark Sided as well. You know, Biasu does have those flashes of brilliance where he can look extremely good on something like a Morphling, something like a Juggernaut. But then there's also games where he really falls to the wayside. He really takes a backseat to Reverie and goes, "Okay, man, I'm not having the goodest, uh, the best of games right now. You can have to. You're, you're the one that's going to have to take the reins." Yeah, for sure. Um, also, for any confusion now. Poyo is actually Baosu. Yeah, it's, it's Despite not the Poyo. fact that Poyo used to play for Darkseid, this is actually Baosu. He's just changed his name just to be annoying. Yeah, I I mean, I understand the whole uh, Poyo meme a little bit later on, uh, earlier on in the in the Australian competitive scene. You know, a lot of people did change their name to that. But changing your actual competitive name to Poyo is kind of annoying for somebody like me who does like to just quick check a name when I'm talking about a hero. Yes. But, I mean, you know, the Baosu is one of, those, one of those players that I can, you know, kind of recognize quite easily. But... No, no confusion just yet for Darksided. But Sand King, this is a hero. Man, Corrosive just showed the power of that hero in that last match, right? Well, I mean, as well as that, last season, we saw the finals. Tekel just picked it twice in a row, or three times in a row, and all three games were wins. 
That just shows the power. It, the biggest thing with that is you can buy the crown, the four stats of each, and you can buy the helm, the armor for the veil. You can buy them both from the side shop. So you can actually just have the first 2,000 gold that you need to purchase all from the side shop, which is a huge deal when you're playing the lane, especially for an off lane who really doesn't want to abuse the courier because you've obviously got mid just absolutely railing on you. It's like, my courier, I need one south. I need one branch. I need one thing. And they'll just ferry it over and over again. So to have that little niche thing is fantastic. Yeah, it does uh, provide you a lot more prowess in that side lane, but it looks like Dark Side of the taking a leaf out of Flashpoint's book, and they're going to go for the old adage of Warlock Spectre. We saw in that last game just how strong it actually was. Fatal Bonds into Rock is really hard to try and deal with. Now, do Infinity go for the same adage as what Shutdown did and just go for these really high tempo kind of heroes to try and end the game before Spectre gets uh, crazy? Because we saw it gets to 45 so. minutes and Spectre gets Cause really hard. That first Rax was honestly the reason I think Shutdown won. That early racks are just enabled so much. Like, we saw those team fights going awry, but then they'd push out the lanes and they'd be not winning as much gold as they should because of those two raxes down. So, you really need to push tempo. And obviously, they pick up the Omni Knight. It was just a staple here. We talked about a POS 4 or POS 5. You just put it on a teammate and. It makes the lane pretty easy, similar to a Warlock. Yeah, well, they do already have the wall, uh, the uh, the lockdown coming from the Sand King, so they don't really need it all too much from the Omni Knight. I think that's what you kind of need to do, right, with this Omni Knight. You, you're realising that you're, you're, you're getting a lot more status for this and a lot more HP from the Heavenly Grace, but you need to kind of compensate for the lack of stun somewhere else, and yeah, Sand King sure. is one of those heroes that, that does allow you. And they're going to get rid of the Centaur as well for Infinity Gaming and the Doom, so they don't want any of these high-tempo offlane kind of heroes. Is there anything else that you want to see Infinity Gaming try and combo with this Omni Knight to try and deal with this spectrum, you know, something like a Slark, maybe? I'd be happy with a Slark. I'd be pretty happy with a Juggernaut, to be honest. Like, a really, really stable mid. Klinks is honestly a good one. Like, I talked about in the start, but if you go Solar Crest early, you can build it well before he gets Radiance, and you just go on top of his head. Yeah, Dispersion hurts you, but it's going to hurt him a lot more, and you put the Burning Army down. They don't care about Dispersion. They're just going to whack you real hard as many times as they can while you're still in range. And it's true. We'll see what Dark Side will do, decide to get rid of. As we're talking about, the Clinks is kind of a Philo Rules special. And if you're in these best of threes, you want to try and get that first game as early as possible, right? Because yeah. once you get that first game, then you don't have to worry too much in that second game. And that's yeah, when you, it... got, you get that extra little bit of chance. Um, although, you know what I love about Infinity Gaming? They've banned five Musica heroes. Actually, they have too. Yeah, they got rid of... Yeah, the Pango, the Lesh, the... All right. So like, they... I don't know if that's a sign of respect or just pure hatred. They're like, you know what? Your captain's going to have a rough time. Uh, your shot caller, your offlane. We're just going to make sure he just gets sacked. But they have left the Sven in. And I think that's the... Pick. No, the Sven got banned by Dark Side of themselves. Oh, they did too. I missed that. Okay. Well, Musica has, <laughs> has a hero pool. Of like seven or eight, he's had six of them banned. That's, I mean, that that is a lot of targeted bans, and I feel like if you're an underdog in this kind of story, like Infinity Gaming is, you kind of have to target one of those players, right? Especially a, a, a linchpin like Musica is to this Dark Side of Rossa. We talk about it again and again that he's the one that shot, makes all the shots. He's the one that creates a lot of space from the off lane, especially when it comes to you know giving Reverie a good game. So if you get rid of all of his heroes, and what's he supposed to do? It also shows that they've done research. Like I've seen a lot of games where Music has struggled, and that means the whole of dark side of the struggle and I think they've just taken it a step further and said we're not going to let music have a game <laughs> well they do get rid of the sand king as well by picking it up for themselves but this is a nix assassin pick a hero that I personally like as a pause for I feel like he if you can he's kind of in the same vein as an earth shaker right like you provide a little bit in the lane but then once you get your level six that's when you can start rotating around that's when you can start becoming a menace and then you start transitioning into a core right you get that agony scepter you get maybe a meteor hammer and that's when you start doing your own thing as nix yeah, for sure. I mean, having a GPM talent on a POS 4, POS 5, always huge. It's always a big deal. Just to have that extra little that, that little buff. You don't need to farm as hard anymore. Of course, he can farm the side lanes better than almost anyone, purely because of the fact he has a free invent. That free and vendetta out um, is pretty good. And the best part of picking Nyx with this lineup, he's got low cooldowns, and he's a nuisance in the map. So if you don't know where he is, you're going to play a bit safer. You might not look to snipe this Spectre out, and he can also find pickoffs. So you just walk around with this vendetta, you scream Spectre, come in here, boy, let's kill this one support that we found. You get that 300 gold, you bail out. It's a free kill almost every time. That also does protect them against, you know, an Infinity Gaming Ember Spirit if they were able to pick that up. It hasn't been banned just now, so it is one of those heroes that we've seen time and time again that is very, very strong for a lot of these teams. And then, Ooh, Phoenix, I like oh, okay. that. This is an MGC classic. 
Big Egg Boy. This is the Big Egg Boy. I was uh, having a chat with uh, with Hype Man the other day about MGC, and you know, you give him these comfort heroes, and he starts ap applying a lot of pressure. And I've been really impressed with his Phoenix play. He's always been able to position his eggs in the right spot, making sure that they're very hard to kill, but also at the same time providing a lot of impact in these team fights. And yeah. I feel like this Phoenix provides a little bit of a twist here for Infinity Gaming because how many people actually play against Phoenix these days? Not many, but. The the play style at least is the same, so it's not like they've just completely forgotten. It's not like a hero that's been just completely changed. Like the Wraith Geek Skeletons, that was a complete change of the hero because he used to just have crit, lifesteal, yeah. stun, and just jump on you. Like there was one play style, and now it's a bit changed, where at least Phoenix has been pretty much the same since release. True. He has that new, um, he can sun ray while egging, <laughs> but... Seems like such a meme to me. It, honestly, it looks terrible, and just generally speaking, it just doesn't work out. It's pretty it's average. But we'll have to see if uh, MGC does get to those uh, those levels of farm. But how did Darkseid respond with this? They need a little egg hitter. Do they just pick up Delina here right now for uh, for Reverie? I think so. Like You'd be fine with an Invoker pickup if you really want to play the late game. Um, Storm Spirit's super questionable because they only actually have the one stun on Sand King. But it's just a hard game. Um, but yeah, there is Delina. That's a good good call. It's just a safe all around. We've, we've talked about it. So much. Yeah. It's just the safest mid. It's very safe. You can't get counterpicked because it's one of those heroes that will always play the lane and always play it decently well. Yeah. Well, it looks like Darksider, they've decided to uh, go with the lean up, trying to get that counter towards the Phoenix in the game. And they need to start revealing some of their calls, right? They they know that the lean is going to be going towards that mid lane. They might as well pick the mid here, right? Yeah. There's no, there's no reason not to. You see the lean, you see their supports as well, so you know what's going to rotate on top of you. You know the Nyx is going to be there, so you can't pick Storm. You can't pick a high mana hero. It might even be rough to pick a Queen of Pain. So they're going is, to is this? Will this be a Clinks? I mean, the Strafe does uh, dodge quite a lot from the lean. Doesn't dodge Laguna, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's true. So... I think it's going to be a rough clinks game if he picks it, but it is... Oh, it's a Slark. Okay, so they are going to slark go for the Slark, slark carry. That's good. They've left it for the next pick. So you're going to get one ban against you, see what they really, like, they're really they thinking about, give it a bit could, more Could time. it be... Could you go for the uh, Philo Rules Husker here? Would this be uh, a good Husker enough Husker Omni? Yeah. That would, could work pretty well. Because the Heavenly Grace does work quite well for the Husker, meaning that um, all that status for this means uh, all for naught. That could be a good little meme pick, but the problem is you've left yourself open. Like, picking Huskar and they've got another pick, they can just commit to picking a hero that just ruins your day. Yeah. Like, you could end up throwing a pos 3 Nyx and a pos 4 AA kind of thing. It yep. just completely ruin your day. Yeah, that's fair. Um, It seems viable. I reckon you're probably along the right lines. That is something Philo Rules would beg for. Some kind of just... And there's the clink span. Um, but yeah, the Huskar could very much work for them because... Philo Rules has that confidence in himself. Yep. He thinks he's going to dominate the lane. It's pretty even matchup wise. He'll probably go something along those lines. Yeah, I, I feel like it could be a good hero for them to try and open up this first game for them. Obviously, if it doesn't work out, they've got another game to try and come back and be like, all right, boys, we tried out this Huskar pick. didn't really work out too much for us. But the final band coming out from Infinity Gaming, what does Dark Side really need? Do they just go for six Musica bands? Well, the thing is, they still need Musica's hero. There's not many things left in the pool. I think he's going to be rider? playing something not traditional. A Batrider, a Beastmaster, I'm thinking. Yeah. Give that a team attack speed, set down the egg. It's pretty good against Omni Knight. It deals with Slark pretty well because you, you naturally are just a tanky hero. And if he goes on you, you've got all these summons around you. You're just a nuisance. And you can push really fast. Yeah. And setting that tempo with a Spectre is really, really necessary. Well, it looks like they do get rid of the Mars instead. So yet another musical hero gets taken away by Infinity Gaming. They're like, all right, Musica, let's see what you can pull out of your bag. But as Woglet said, you know, Beastmaster is still a decent pick for them. But with the final pick, you know, we're talking about the Huskar. Is there anything kind of left that you'd really want? I mean, it's not, I mean, you can't really pick Sniper into Spectre, can you? Uh, I mean, you can. You shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, what, what you can and can't do is very relative purely for the fact that you're like, you know what? Stop it. I'll play a bad matchup if I think I'm going to outplay the lane. Yeah. I'll play a bad matchup if it works well for my team. And Infinity are one of those people that will do that. And the Death Prophet is. I mean, that's not bad. It provides them quite a lot of team fight. They have the, the GA, the Epicenter, the Egg, and the uh, Exorcism. It provides a little bit of space for Slark in these yeah. team fights as well to find the backliners. Have you seen a Heavenly Grace Ag's Death Prophet? Oh, that looks. It that sounds is bad. a lot of health. A lot. You basically become unkillable if you get one or two spirit siphons off. Yeah, that seems uh, very hard to try and deal with. But 
Dark sided now. They need their final pick. Still thinking about a music hero, I feel like. They could go for an A if they wanted to put music on something like a Nyx Assassin, Pause for Lena. Could I, be the I, way to go. I personally think Beastmaster's a good pick here. It just rounds out their draft pretty well. OD. Okay. So it is a music of Nyx Assassin. No, Xavier's Nyx Assassin. No, you've been baited again. <laughs> well, what is music of Lena? I guess so. I mean, would you do a pos three warlock? I think that's worse. So, <laughs> it is I mean, I would have liked the Nyx assassin to be the pos three and Lena because you know you just go this uh this eighth lens build on Lena and she becomes really really strong. I mean, it could work if you go early eighth lens. You could also go like that phase boots attack damage build yeah. with shadow blade, um, which would really deal well with Stylin. Like you can just walk in and just clean him up. Or well, MJC, sorry, they're different names. <laughs> different name, same person. I mean, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Those names. I don't even know if they're actual. I think I think the first two are Chinese and the last three are Korean. Well, that's super helpful. I don't speak either of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's MGC. At least he's got the first name. Yep, yep. started there. And Woody Moe is going to be picking up the slark as well. So, after seeing these two drafts, how are we feeling? Personally, I'm. Not quite sure how this dark side of draft is going to go. If they give Biasu a good enough lane on the Spectre, he can start carrying out. But I don't see how this offlane is supposed to go for Xavier as well as Music. Because, I mean, this Phoenix is yeah, going to do... It doesn't sound like a good matchup. But at the same time, they were confident in that OD pick. They thought about that, and they wanted Music on Lena. Um, I think Infinity have the better draft. I just think dark side are going to play as a team a bit better. And Infinity's lineup requires near-perfect teamwork. Like, we saw what happens... With perfect teamwork, those yep. base defenses become insanely hard to deal with. But I, I'm not sure they're going to play that well. They're still a team that's forming around each other. They're still getting used to each other. I've got to give it to Darkseid. All right. We'll have to see how it goes. I feel like I agree with you there, Wogel. You know, the Infinity Gaming Draft does look better on paper, but, you know, you, you can't really count out Darkseid, who's been consistently strong in the Australian scene, whereas Infinity Gaming kind of struggled to, to qualify for a few things, but they are in this league nonetheless. So we'll have to see how this does work out. Is there going to be any aggressive try lane coming out from Infinity Gaming, you know, pushing the Slark, Phoenix, and Omni Knight lane towards the Spectre to put pressure on Baosu? Uh, I mean, <laughs> that lane itself, those three heroes, is a zero stun lineup. Yep. They also only have one slow and one... I mean, I'll guess... I'll count that as a stun, I guess. A pounce is stun. A little bit of lockdown. Yeah, like a bit of lockdown. But you're up against a double stun lineup that is a lot of burst damage. It's going to be a bit iffy. And also, if they commit the Warlock to that lane as well, all of a sudden, you can't kill any of them, and they've got the nuke potential to kill you. It's a bit rough. Well, it looks like for now, they're just going to have stock stand They're pinging lanes. a lot. Oh, they're mid put towards mid. Mid lane is definitely going to have enough vision, and I think Reverie saw both of them. He definitely saw that one. He's pinged out this one completely. He was standing on that high ground. Um, if they get both of those... It's a very, very early lead for, for mid lane, and I don't think you catch yeah, up Yeah, yeah, they did ping both of them. Uh, I believe Xavier is pinging both the wards. Mm. Well, he had this ward here too, so this ward would have seen them place it if he if he stood too far forward. But either way, they're going to have a fight for the runes here. They do throw out the, uh, the Fiery Spirit, so a lot of the attack speed is going away. So, Woody Moe is going to be able to collect the top one. K-Tastic gets to the bottom one, but he has already used his Sandstorm, so yeah. Baosu will get the other one. He's also shown his level, which is fine. Like, Sandstorm level 1 is pretty normal. But he's still got the sentry, and on the other side, it's just going to be a battle of the sentries, basically, for that lane. I feel like that's how it always goes for these air kings, right? You need to make sure that you get the, the, the first... Uh, oh, no! Okay, the stasis trap actually looks like it's going to play away from Woody <laughs> Moe. They do get the double stun, yeah, but I think bait. it's a bait. They do get the pounce out here on Xavier with the Heavenly Grace. So Xavier gets baited into a stun, and Woody Moe's the one that picks up the first blood, so that's the first point. Of, actually, no, he doesn't get the permanent agi because he didn't have uh, Essence Shift. And this is what I was talking about with this Music Alina. They're going to get baited in. This is a lot of damage coming out from these Fire Spirits. He's hit all four on the Music, so uh, he's going to take he so much damage. One, he God. misses the last one, and with the Heavenly Grace coming out from Jesus, he's going to take a lot of this damage, torn himself back towards his Slark. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a Stasis Trap, A, happen in a competitive game, and B, be used to actually get a kill. I mean, it, it got a kill in the other direction. Yeah, it was a bait. It was all a bait. It was just the genius 200 IQ play from Woody Mo. It was uh, an interesting use there of the shovel cosmetics. 
I mean, consumables. I gotta be honest, I thought they would, like, be banned in captain's mode when they came out. Oh, here comes a light truck array with the uh, the impel on top. MGC, yes, use the fairy fire, but it doesn't matter because Xavier's got those big old long claws. And they get themselves a trade kill in the other way. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a bit of a brawl matchup, like especially because of that tri lane versus duo lane. But on the other side, you've got a Spectre who's probably going to get close to free farm, which is what you, you can't really let that happen. Like, K-Tastic in a solo lane, he's going to start struggling a bit more and more. Um, he lost the D-Ward War, as you can see here. He's lost his. So, he can't really farm. As long as they keep these creeps here for Baosu, I think K-Tastic just starts getting auto-denied. Yeah, it does feel like as soon as you start losing that uh, Sentry War, it feels very hard for a Sand King to get stuff done. But they're going to go forward here out on Musica, who's been zoned out of experience range. It's two levels in, and he wants to try and get that level two. Then he's walking himself forward, finally does get that level 2, doesn't get a level in Fiery Soul. I'm going to go for that Dragon Slave, but they do come forward. Nice little Light Truck away with the Impale out on top. Woody Mo eventually connects with the Pounce, but I think they have enough. I think they have the move speed, and they do. Woody Mo gets himself some permanent energy. He's looking for a second bit, but with the uh, Spike Carapace. Xavier gets himself far enough away. Yeah, a bit of, bit of permanent energy. We've, we've seen Slark when they struggle, so he really needs this start. He needs the start where he can just get a couple last hits, well, he can get a few of these kills, and then he can start to steamroll, because he's going to have a free free lane with this extra Heavenly Grace. Who's, he let, went level 1, so he's, he's fully committed to the lane. I think Purification level 1 is, is fairly bad, but the Impale comes out top. They don't have enough damage with his auto attacks, so what do you know? He's going to get that salve, he's going to get that Heavenly Grace, so he's going to get himself back to full HP. But mid lane, Philo Rules, taking quite a lot of damage here from Reverie. He doesn't have the damage because of that Soul Siphon. It's an even matchup though. S Sixteen to five, thirteen to three. You can't expect much more than that. Like obviously, early levels of Astral is pretty pathetic. You can't really get on top of them. Um, but yeah, everything's pretty much as you'd expect for these lanes. Nothing special is going to happen. They all just want to farm. They all want to get to their levels. A thousand gold on Bowser hasn't been spent yet, so he's he's living the life down here. Yeah, he's really is enjoying this free lane that he has been given 20 and 15. But top lane, where all the action's at. The Light Strike Array hits on a three of these heroes. The Dragon Slave hits them as well, but with this Heavenly Grace, they're going to come forward. Xavier, taking quite a lot of damage, but he has a lot of uh, HP regen on this Six Assassin, so he's okay for now. He's sort of lost quite a lot of these stats. Yeah, I mean, the stats are fine because it actually makes your health regen worth more. <laughs> like, just the little things in life. Oh, they're going to come forward. They hit the Impel. The Light Strike Array is coming out on Jesus as well. Woody Spike Carapace, Heavenly Grace, though. Going to come forward. Don't get the Dark Pact in time. Here's Woody Mo. Gets the Pounce forward. Wants to try and take out Xavier. He really needs this permanent energy, but the Light Strike Array from Musica is completely sapped of mana. So he can't trade anymore. But they do get the ki uh, they do get quite a lot of damage here on a, uh, Xavier. Yeah, yet another close play, but nothing coming of it. But... Woody Mo, 21 and 8 versus a 6 and 0 Lena. You said he was going to have a rough time. I think that was an understatement of how rough this lane actually is becoming for him. Yeah, it does feel like that uh, this draft got. I feel like it got away from Darkseid a little bit. Um, you know, they weren't obviously expecting six of Musica's heroes to be banned out. So you get to a point where you're like, what are we actually going to pick here for Musica? And they were like, oh, okay, we're just going to. Last pick this OD because it's a really good matchup against the Death Prophet. And then, you know, it kind of awkwardly gets into a situation where we've already picked the Lena, so who's going to pick the Lena? And then they're like, okay, I have Musica, you pick it up. And he picks it up, and now this lane is not going as well as they thought it was going to. I think, potentially, could it be a little bit of underestimating your opponents a little bit? You know, just being like, okay, we're, we're a lot stronger than what Infinity are. We can play this kind of greedier lane, you know, put Musica on something like a Lena where he can... Start to snowball a bit more? Um, it could be that. Uh, it also could be for the fact that like, we haven't thought about this, but they could have said to themselves, we want two winning lanes. We don't really care what happens in the off lane because we want Rev to be farmed and we obviously want Bowser to be farmed. And so far, despite the fact that Musix is getting absolutely bodied in this lane, they're still ahead slightly. Yep. They've lost two kills to one, but they're still slightly ahead in gold. And you can see, like, 26 and 17 on this Spectre. He's getting exactly what he needs. He's getting absolute free farm, unimpeded. K-Tastic's kind of getting bodied and sent back to the lane. I mean, he's the same level as Musica, and they're in a dual lane. Yeah, like, that, that's the kind of thing you look at, and you're like, oh, maybe it's not as bad as you think. Like, the XP's starting to tally up. Like, the gold's starting to tally up. It could be fine. Like, that could be their mentality of just saying, Musica, you're going to get bodied. You're going to have to deal with it. Yeah, just try and come into this mid-game where you have 
You know, a few levels out on this lane, you can start rotating with the Impal as well as the uh, the Light Strike Array comboing up. Yeah. I but mean, the other thing is, like, a level 6 in this lane, like, if Xavier or Musica get 6, that's suddenly a kill. Just every single time, someone gets blown up. Well, MGC, they're trying to create a little bit more space. There's another 20 seconds till we have Bounty Runes up. I believe that's where the next Brawl will be happening. Music is just going to try and get the creeps that he can in this lane. And try and join up with Xavier to make sure that they get some of these Bounty Runes. Because as we said, they are winning these lanes quite heavily. The Impel comes out, Xavier. He doesn't have the damage. So he's going to lose a lot of his HP. I think he's going to lose his life as well. Does he get the Bounty Rune? He does. The dark side is they get three. I mean, they get two. Uh, Woody, Woody Mo Mo going around the side, though. Very yeah, heads up play He's going to be him. able to catch out Musica here. They have to pounce out on top. He doesn't have the light tracker. He actually does. So he hits out on two of these heroes. Musica's making quite a lot of space. He has the shrine up as well. A nice escape there from Musica. This is a, kind of the downfall of Infinity Gaming Draft, having only one stun, which is fantastic. Yeah, one stun that's quite unreliable in the early game. Like, the, the range of sinking stun is pathetic. Like you can see here, it's even two levels, and even that's not a great range. That is true. And he can't, he can't really stop Bowser from doing whatever he wants. He's gone the Sol Ring build. Obviously, this is great. So you can, whenever there's a late range creep that you're going to miss, you just Sol Ring, you throw the Spectral Dagger, and you're good to go. You never miss last hit. Yeah, it does also allow him to to be a little bit more tanky. I have a little bit more regen as well. He has that Wraith Band up, so he can do a, a lot more auto attack damage. But this oh. is, as you said. They are kind of winning two of these lanes. Xavier's going to come forward. He has the Impel out. Doesn't look like he's going to get there in time. Jesus comes in with that Heavily in Grace, and it looks like the Impel misses completely. So remember, he's getting gone here by Philo Rules, but the Invis Rune comes out from the OD. He gets himself far enough away. They will be able to stick on top of him. And it looks like... And we Bowser lost Spectre in the meantime. Down. A little bit unfortunate. We're talking to, talking up how good Bowser's game was going to be, but you know, that I mean, he might have just overextended. Like it looks like it was a just great rotation from MGC there. K Tastic baiting him in, like 140 health, 100 mana, like just absolute brinkmanship. And he might die. Oh, he should be fine. He should be fine for these. Yeah, I think he's gonna nope. be okay. Oh no, is that dagger hit? He's actually no, he's just gonna die. He's gonna die to the fatal bonds. He's got a hit. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let the creeps do the work, Bowser. That's all good to go. I mean, maybe he didn't register the fact that he was that close to dying. Uh, well, there is a fight going out top. They use a lot of these uh, these fiery spirits out onto the lane. doing a lot of work. Xavier, though, Light Truck Ray is in the perfect position. They take out MGC to the creeps. It's a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, this lane, we were talking about how bad it was actually going for them. XP-wise, they're, they're cheering. So level 4, about to be 5. Woody Mo's getting 5, but Jesus and MGC are just having a really rough time. Level 3 just, and obviously, like, still at level 3 as well. Yeah, MGC is doing a lot of work in the other lanes, you know, making that rotation to take out Baosu, but as you said, he's a little bit lacking on the EXP side. If he doesn't get that level 6 at a timely, you know, mana, it's going to be a lot easier for Darkseid to try and get these fights. Pounce comes forward here from Woody Mo, gets the Dark Pact out as well. Miska hasn't used that Light Tracker A, eventually will throw it down on top of him, but the Slash Resist from the Heavenly Grace. That was Woody Mo to get further away, but Musica is so goal stand fast. Bowsu. I think Bowsu dies again here. Oh, the Bar Strike comes forward. The Epicenter is being charged up as well. Bowsu gets himself into the trees, but the Die 4 does break those. And MGC picks up another Bowsu kill. It's and nice the tits come out. Yeah. There's nothing more sad than having a free lane and then dying twice and getting tipped by the enemy's supports. I mean, this is what happens when you have a Warlock, right? You get to a point where, yeah, you are kind of strong with that uh, Shadow Word, but oh. Real Jesus getting himself caught out with that light tracker. A lot of damage. Oh. Do they have the auto attacks? Oh, um, Jesus. I mean, he walked the wrong way. He is quite slow, though. Like, he do doesn't... 370 movement speed. He actually probably could have outrun them. But just another Dragon Slave would have killed him in the end. That is true. So they picked themselves up a pause five. And as you said, we're talking about music having a hard time. A reverie, though. Towards the mid lane, there is no more soul siphons, but a haste rune is used there by Philo Rules. Trying to bring Reverie into this T1 tower. He doesn't have the sound in his Eclipse to be used. Biasu didn't run out bottom. We're talking about him having a free lane, but now they've decided to send Woody Mo towards bottom. Woody Mo pre-6, though, so he's going to struggle quite a bit. Like, you can see he's sitting on that half health. He doesn't really want to leave. He's that close to the Midas. He's that close to level 6, which really skyrockets Slark. As soon as he gets that extra regen on the Shadow Dance, he basically becomes unkillable, and they get the mid lane. That is a free solo kill for Reverie. Did level up that Saturday's Eclipse as soon as he hit that level 8. Got he just got 8 nine. and instantly killed the guy. Yep, Musica makes his rotation bottom. As you said, as soon as the level 6 come out here on either Musica or Xavier, they get themselves a kill, and they do. He didn't even commit it. He still got the Laguna Blade. Oh, so it looks like it must have just been an impel into LSA or LSA into impel, whatever yeah. way that it did work out. I mean, that's the that's the 
benefit of Darkseid. They've got so much burst potential through Musica, through Xavier. Obviously, when Reverie starts getting those stacks up, he can just blow someone up, which is what happened in the mid lane. Philo Rules thought he was safe. He sees that level up, doesn't register the fact that that's Sanity's Eclipse, and just gets instantly killed. That is true. So it's working out quite well here for Darkseid. We see that Reverie is sitting very highly up in the net worth. Almost a 1,000 above uh, Woodymo on this Slark. This early on is really good, especially when we were talking about this Dark Side of Roster, and Reverie does feel like the, the, the hero that, that makes it or breaks it for the music. He's a nice little light tracker. He wants to try and take out the, the Phoenix, and he does get it with the Golem on top. He's on the three of these heroes, but Philly rules. He's made his rotation with this Heavenly Grace, doing quite a lot of work. The Shadow Dance gets stunned up there by the LSA. And Reverie's made his rotation from the sidelines. He wants to try and take out this uh, Death Prophet. She's out here completely by herself. If they have any way of stopping her, they can get on top of her. Gonna come forward. Does get himself oh, an item. I think she's dead now, yeah. He is certainly dead. But uh, looks like they made the rotation here with Jesus. So can they get on top of him? Can they deal enough damage? Bowser, Bowser he has to can... run himself away. He has to go into the strength threads. I don't think he's going to be able to. Last little auto attack or end the uh, haunt on top. Do they have enough? It looks like they're going to be able to chase him towards... No. 60 HP up and MGC misses all his spirits. Nice little shot by him, but eventually doesn't get it. And they're going to come forward here. They found out the Death Prophet. And Philo rules. He's going to be going down, extending just a little bit too far. And Reverie gets himself yet another kill. I mean, almost perfect plays from Philo rules. Like, having that absolute trust in Jesus to keep him alive. But unfortunately, it just Reverie. doesn't work out for him. The LSA hits perfectly timed. So MGC cannot fly himself away. And they are starting to put the pedal to the metal. Darkseid, they're really starting to ramp up here. I mean, just for like a slight misplay from the Philo rules there, just going over extended with the Death Prophet, your ultimate runs out, and you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. You just have to get Jesus to save you, but it's just not enough. You just couldn't get out of there. Reverie playing it pretty well with his Astrals, making sure his team can prep another stun over and over again. And we're seeing Poyo, or oh, Bowsu, sorry, getting killed. Oh, that's a beautiful impale there from Xavier. Buys enough space for Bowsu to get himself into the trees. And this is the problem with Infinity Gaming's draft. They don't have enough stuns. They have no way of catching up to these heroes. Kaitasi gets caught out there by Xavier. He gets the, uh, the uh, Vendetta hit. It looks like the creeps are the one that cleans it up. But they get themselves a kill nonetheless on the Sand King. And they're looking for more here, Dark Sided. Trying to get a little bit more, but with a 2,000 net worth lead, I think they're more than happy with this. The um, Fail is coming towards Reverie now as well. That's a lot of uh, magic damage amp for them. Yeah, it's, it's 2,000 lead, but the music is catching up again. He's almost caught it back up to the Slark. MGC hasn't registered. Oh, they're playing a bit of tango. Does music know he's there? He does. He does now. Certainly you saw him. Yeah, he's pinging, he's pinging now. He sees him. All right, so MGC... Doesn't have the egg, so he can't make the play onto Musica, I don't think. Especially with uh, Woodymo having such little money. Yeah, even with the egg, that would have been a hard kill. But they bail out, they make the smart choice. Both t both players realising it's not going to work out for them. They really don't want to have to commit everything and to have them walk away. Especially on a Slark, who's just going to heal up. That is true. Well, either way, Woodymo has got that hand of minus up. He's going to have his treads up as well. Do you think this is, like... Drums Diffusal game or like Blink Santinyasha or Shadow um, Blade? I like the Drums Diffusal. Um, I don't think Shadow... Like Shadow Blade Silver Edge is good against Spectre, but it's going to be a bit hard and a bit niche to play around. Um, he's going for the Drums now. I think he just needs to stat heavy up so he doesn't get burst by the Lena. Because if he makes a mistake here, he can just die instantly and not have any kind of repercussion, or any type of um, way to get around it. Yeah, we see that uh, uh, Dragon Save does do a lot of work here to Woody Mo. Out comes the Ashland Imprisonment towards that mid lane. They've taken out the first T1 tower. That will be the mid one for Revry. So he has that veil up. He's going to go for drums himself. I personally would have liked like maybe like Blink BKB. Would have been nice. I don't mind. Like For the same thing, like, he wants to set the tempo so heavily. So if he just goes these stat heavy items and just starts running and setting pace as fast as he can, that could be good. Because you can see, like we've talked about music is still a bit behind... He's still got quite a bit to go. Bowser obviously isn't going to be a hero for the next seven to eight minutes until he gets this Radiance. I'm not sure if he will build it because he's got the two grand spare, but you got to assume if he's saving up this much money, he's good to go. Yeah, exactly. We'll have to see how it does work out. It is only 16 kills here at 14 minutes in the game. Still very early on for both these teams, but this Reverie uh, OD is starting to, to start to ball out of control, I think. And that's when they start to group together, start to try and make space here for Bowser. That's when it really starts to kick off for Darkseid. But looks like they are just sitting back and farming for now until Bowser does get a few of those items, gets himself to a crazy spot, and uh, see what he can do. So we'll have to wait and see what Reverie gets done. 
Well, top side of the map, they are playing a little bit more aggressive here on the Woody, most likely. He does have that uh, Shadow Dance. If he ever does need to use it, and Xavier making his way towards the mid. Should be okay for now, but it looks like on the bottom side of the map, they are pressuring themselves in towards that T1 tower. Not using the exorcism just yet. They have the arcane route on Philo rules, whether or not they do want to use it. I mean, they're going to have to. I, you might as well commit for something, but a tier 1 with 175 health, that's just gone into deniable. I don't think that's the yes, way Tobbs, you want to be doing it. Tobbs Arena, you're going to see that? Going to see that, buddy? Doesn't look like he does, but with this arcane rune, they still looks like they want to try and fight. They've moved towards the top side of the map, I believe. Feel like, yeah, he's going to pop the arcane, pop the exorcism, going to try yeah. and take out a full T1 tower bottom. They don't clean up the one bottom, so... It's interesting they made the rotation towards top, especially now. Bowser just coming in really blind by himself. No one else around him. Oh, yeah, they do have K-Tastic on the backside as well. Person who picked up Vale on him. They're going to start aggressively onto this Spectre. They want to try and catch her out. Oh, Poyo. I mean, Bowser, that's uh, a bit of an interesting walk forward, my friend. The Epicenter comes out and the uh, Sandstorm. The Bowser, my friend, that is not where you want to be. You are stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, a, a bit of a misplay. Like, I think he's just playing a bit too aggressive, not showing the, like, the level of respect that is needed because K-Tastic and obviously Jesus is blowing him up every time. He's got that three levels in purification now. It's really hard to deal with. It's six, 700 damage worth of nuke. And he, every time he's just getting caught out, getting epicentered. And at least on the plus side, his team is like creating a lot of space, fighting in different areas. So it doesn't look as bad as it could, but it's still a Spectre that... Is 2k, 3k away from actually being a viable hero. I mean, I think it's also a kind of combination where it's like, okay, Reverie's kind of the real carry at this moment, right? Yeah, I mean, Reverie's looking pretty hot. Music is catching up. He's he's just built that Aether Lens. It's probably coming to him now. He's going to start to do a lot of damage in these team fights. He's going to be hard to deal with because they don't really have the jump on him yet. Like, they don't have the blink on K-Tastic. MJC is not farmed enough to jump in the back lines and try to deal with it. He'll just get killed on the egg. So there's going to be a window here where they probably won't need Baosu at all. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be quite hard for them to, to do what they need to do. Either way, Yuzuku is trying to push out this mid lane. There's really not many towers going down. I think all the T1 towers have gone for the side of the Radiant. And Baosu towards the top, he is getting going on. Taking quite a lot of damage from the Sand King. So K K Tastic is really just putting the pressure on the Bowser, right? Just being like, okay, you're in this lane. I'm going to try and pressure you as much as I can because I'm the hero that you can't really deal with. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to see, like, someone that just re registers the fact that his hero has to do something and it has to be annoying. That's the biggest part of Sand King. And he's playing it perfectly. Bowser is getting really triggered at these fights. You can tell the way he's walking. He's just not happy with how it's going. Yeah, they have used the exorcism towards bottom. Still is, he is only level one. Gonna take a, quite a while to take yeah. out this T2 tower, and it looks like Infinity Gaming. It's gonna get this one for free. Side of Dark Side, don't want to try and it's defend quite this T2 slow. Tower. Like, they could have defended it, but they're, they're gonna commit to the trade. They're registering the fact that it's gonna be a rough fight, even if Philo Rules doesn't have the exorcism. Yeah. The Biasu, getting a little bit of injection of gold, trying to take out that T1 tower. Moving him towards that uh, Sacred Relic when he does get that. So he's about 200 gold away from that Sacred Relic. And that's when he's farm speed can start to increase a little bit more. Get a little bit extra damage. Can burn through these creeps a little bit quicker. So creeps are uh, heading towards that Tier 3 tower. So he can uh, burn them out. Woody Mo though, almost has his Blink Dagger he's, up. He saw the, the Kuri. He's going to wait for it, I think. He's just going to sit in this low ground here. Wait for the Kuri to come through. Is it going to ah. come back? It looks like, no, Woody Mo wants to go get his Blink Dagger first. MJC, is he going to go for it? No, he decides better of it. They oh. go for the kill instead. Okay, well that's a real Jesus kill right there, and this is the uh, the power of Xavier when it comes to that invis. Just Vendetta being able to get on top of somebody like an Omni Knight and the Light Tracker A and the Impale is more than enough damage. But top side, Reverie gets Virus Strike up, and they do have the Golem on top. They're doing a lot of work here. Reverie's creating a little bit of space, but he's stunned up. He has no way of getting out here with the pounds, but no, he doesn't even get the Sanities off. But I don't think it matters because the rest of the heroes are going to be able to go down. Philo rules. He's a little bit healthier. He dual steps himself up into the air, but with the rotation from Baosu, they get themselves four. The Omni Knight was already dead in that fight, so he wasn't able to help with the GA or the Heavenly Grace. And that was a big team fight there for the side of Dark Side. Yeah, it's an expensive bait, having Reverie sit in the front lines, but they knew what was going to happen. Like, you could see the Warlock was sitting here. Tobbs was ready for that jump. He knew it was coming. Musical was coming around. They just land stun after stun after stun on their entire team. 
and they completely wipe them. They take the tier two. They trade off for that bot tier two that they left for free, because Philo Rules had no he had no exorcism. He couldn't fight there. He was just a bit too cocky. And now the radius has come through. He's got the recipe going towards the secret shop here. At least I assume so. Yeah, that's his now. And okay, gets enough. He's going to be playing Dota soon. He's he's got that radiance. You're going to start to see his farm absolutely skyrocket. And Slark, despite the Midas, he's still not top net worth. He's gone for this blink to try to get on this back line, and it hasn't really paid off for him yet. He's just not he's not farmed enough to take on fights. Yeah, we saw in that last fight he did blink in towards Reverie, but you know even though we got Reverie stuck inside of the egg. There was just so much follow-up coming from the side of Darkseid. It was a beautiful impal come out from Reverie, catching all four of those heroes. They got rid of the egg as well. And then the fact that there was no uh, Jesus there to have the GA or even the Heavenly Grace, which is what you picked that hero for. Yeah, I mean, that's all you picked the hero for. There's just absolutely just the Guardian Angel in the late game. The Heavenly Grace is very good, but being able to reset the fight like that is just insane. Um, and it's heads-up play for Darkseid. Like, they all committed to that egg, despite the fact that a lot of them had... The debuff on them had that slow from the fire spirits. They knew it had to go down. It is only a level 1 egg as well, so it's a very few uh, attacks. But all oh, the Yule stepped it up, and it means they do miss a pound, so they don't really have much in the way of stun. They have come forward here. They do get the fire strike in. Reverie has to get away, but there's the laser beam coming out from MJC is the one that picks it up. So they've used the exorcism so they can commit towards his tier 2 tower. And Reverie, although he was the big man on the block, looks like he's dropped down quite heavily in the net worth chart, but I think Bouse is the one that's picking it back up. Yeah, two deaths in a row never feels good for a mid laner, especially when you haven't got an item in between. You lose this tier two, but Bouse is going to have his ultimate Woody in three on the seconds. Backside. Does miss a pounce, hits, get, gets hit by the LSA and Laguna Blade on top. Do they have enough? The Impel comes forward and with a, a Haunt on top. Bowsie wants to get on top of these heroes. They have used the GA, but oh, they're going for the Slark, which is probably not the hero you want to try and go for. They found him out though. Reverie with the buyback comes in, gets the Aslan Imprisonment. Does he come down? Yes, he does. They're getting with the uh, Dragon Slave from Musica. Can they catch out Jesus? He's quite quick here on oh, the Omni but the Yule Scepter ridiculous Scepter range. With that Aether Lens, with that talent from Musica, they were able to grab the Omni Knight. Yeah. So that's two I mean, free kills there. But that was a buyback on Reverie. It was a buyback. It probably was worth it. You take out that core, you take out Slark, and you're probably going to fight for a tier two now that Exorcism's down. You're not worried about Egg. Like, we saw what happened in the last fight. And if they can find a kill here... Oh, they found out K-Tastic. Xavier gets there with the Light Strike Array atop and the Dragon Slave. Do they have a way of, of catching him out? K-Tastic is inside oh, the... Oh, uh, he jumps back oh, out. Oh, no. K-Tastic, he went for the right play, but unfortunately Reverie was already one step ahead of him. They had no detection. They only had detection on Tobbs, and Tobbs didn't even react. He did not move. He knew K-Tastic was going to panic and have to worry about that Radiance. There's nothing he can do. He had no TP. He just, he just burns to the Radiance or has to commit at one point. He just chose the exact wrong way to jump. <laughs> and unfortunately, he didn't get the stun onto Reverie either. He, like, barged, like, directly in front of Reverie, and he's like, oh, okay, that's a free sand kick. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, just, just take some free real estate. Just... <laughs> Have a, have a good time with it. Have a good time. And now Bowsu, not dying for a long time, means that he can start racking up that net worth. And he's got a full Yasha coming. How's that Radiance? Once he gets that Manta style, that's, an, that's when he doesn't have to really worry about much. And pretty much as soon as that Bar Strike's gone, then that's all Infinity Gaming's lockdown gone. And, you know, as soon as Bowsu sees that, he can haunt in and, and off he pops. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got the, the Yasha coming in. Now. He's farmed. Like, after those two really, really... Questionable deaths, I'm going to go with. Um, he's been playing this pretty well. He's been finding farm where he needs to, coming into the fights that they know they're going to win and taking those free kills. And just all around, really, really re-establishing himself as top of the net worth. And speaking of, Reverie has dropped even further now. Yeah, I mean, Reverie's taking his back seat. Like, he's, he's not going for the blink. It looks like he's going straight for a BKB. He wants to just play it safe. He knows... There's going to come a point where Bowser's unkillable, and he just needs to make sure Bowser gets there. Well, Musico does get his smoke popped, but his smoke on smoke action. So if Infinity Gaming get themselves into a situation when they're trying to get this team fight to go forward, Woody Mo comes forward though, doesn't get caught out by anything. The Rock completely misses there from Tobbs. They do come forward here, they have the horn out on top. There's so much damage coming out here, and k oh, but the Jesus. hammer gets dropped, and Reverie takes out two. They're looking for a third, and they get it. MGC is the one that gets claimed by Darkseid, and Reverie, we're talking about him taking a back seat, but man, when he slaps that hammer down, that's a front seat gamer right there. So he, he slapped the hammer down, he had eight Arcane Orb. It's stolen. He killed the two strength heroes. Yeah, he just absolutely blows up. Like, that entire draft bar below rules is very stat weak. Yep. Like, even Slark, he only gets 1.7 per level. He doesn't really build too many items at an int. And obviously, the rest of them are just absolutely poor on the intelligence. 32 intelligence. 
50. It's it's not great for them. Yeah, this looks like it will be a free rush end here for Darksider. They don't have Haunt, they don't have Hammer, they don't have Laguna Blade, they don't have Rock, and they don't have Vendetta. Doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter because this is such an easy Roshan here for the side of Darksided. They have all their ultimates up on Affinity Gaming, but it just seems like uh, they just caught the wrong end of that smoke, right? They weren't able to, to get the fight they needed. Woody Mo was the one that initiated rather than something like the Egg or even the, uh, the Death oh. Prophet. Oh, he's going to miss the Meteor Hammer. No, oh, no, he's he, going to walk back into it. It's a heads up play. Oh, it looks like Woody Moe does get caught out, but the Dark Pact is still able to get rid of that stun. They found him out in the Laguna Blade on top. Do they have the damage? Yes, they do. Bowsie finds him in the trees, and they've taken out the Slark. Woody Mo. he looked like the saving grace here for Infinity Gaming, but unfortunately, he's died too many times too early on. Yeah, he's starting to really struggle now. He hasn't got the farm to actually save himself in these team fights. Watch this. Woody Mo comes forward. They completely whiff the rock, but I don't think it matters because uh, Reverie comes in. He steals a little bit of in, and then bang! See you later. Those two heroes were there. They're no longer there anymore. MGC has to fall all the way back. He doesn't use the egg because, you know, obviously... There's no not, point, yeah. There's no point. The egg was going to die anyways, but that hammer coming out from Reverie. Oh, my Lord, that was sweet to He watch. always got a triple kill from one click. And exactly. every time that happens, you're like, look at his items. He doesn't have a Kaya. He went to BKB. He's honestly not that stat heavy. I mean, the Veil wise. does a lot of work for him, though, right? Yeah, true. Getting that Veil plus 15 in and then just getting the actual weakness is huge. Yeah. They did a lot of work in that fight, and that's what Infinity Gaming have to be worried about. They have to be worried about this Reverie OD. He has the PKB up now, and the fact that Baosu hasn't died in any of these fights, he's accruing a massive net worth lead above Woody Mole on the Slark, and even above Philo Rules on the Death Prophet as well. Once he gets to a point where, you know, he's got something like a Heart, maybe even something like a Scardi or a Basher, that's when it makes it a lot harder for Infinity Gaming to win these fights, because they need to kill Reverie, but they also need to kill Baosu at the same time. Yeah, I, I think it's the one more item. It doesn't have to be Heart, doesn't even have to be Scardi. Just the next item he gets will bring him up to about 2.4k health. It'll bring him up to a range where he can start solo killing people if he goes the Basher. Um, he's going the Diff Blade, so yeah, definitely he can jump on top of people. He's got uh, that level 20 talent coming up too as well, right? Yeah. So he's just going to be able to jump on anyone he wants. Even the Death Prophet probably dies to him. And there's just nothing you can do about it. He's just that farmed. They've given him an absolute free game. He has squandered a few of the leads here and there, but he's now playing... Pretty much spot on Dota. Yeah, and with the Aegis, they're going to go for the higher ground here. He just doesn't care either. Like, oh, the Meteor Hammer's coming forward, but Philo rules. He's taking so much damage. You can't just stand here and tank everything. You're not completely impervious. And out comes the Hammer again. The Golem in the backside as well. They've taken out two in Infinity Gaming. They're crumbling inside of their own base. You can't do this because Philo rules doesn't have any buyback. The Laser Beam's doing what it can against Baosu, but he's the one with the Aegis. He's okay. Reverie saves his home. They don't door. even want to reset his health pool. They do come in here. Jesus gets the buyback, but with the Golem as well as Delina clicking away at this building, they're going to lose the tier 3 tower. Katastic has a very defensive sandstorm, so he's not able to kill these creeps early on. Yeah. They do he get has the back got the protection. blink epi though. He's going to come forward, he resets his sandstorm. So it sets it in a better position to try and kill these creeps. So they will be able to defend their racks, but they lose a tier 3 tower, they get the buyback here, onto Jesus, and... I mean, Philo rules... Thought like he was God. He walked forward, he got a few drains out, but I mean, there's so much damage coming out from Reverie, and he just yeah. whacked him a couple of times and then threw down the hammer. Yeah, that Agus makes you think you're invincible, but if you don't get all those spirit siphons out, and if you don't get your ulti coming back to you, and you need to get those silence off, like come, getting that health to come back to you is huge. And he kind of just stood there and cop stun after stun after stun, and that's how you die. You just get comboed, like stun locked. There's nothing you can do. Jesus can only get rid of one of the things. That's the and problem. And he's only got three levels in it right now because he's so lacking on those levels. He needs that maxed out Heavenly Grace where it starts getting to that ridiculous point, right? Where you get the 28 burner strength, you get the extra regen, and it can start spamming him out a bit more, you know, every 14 seconds rather than yeah, every 15. Yeah, with a tw uh, 14 second cooldown, 12 second uptime. So. Yeah. Which yeah, is ridiculous. Casually have it 85% of the time, no worries. Yeah, it feels good. But at that point, they have to be playing a little bit scared because even with that Heavenly Grace, Odie doesn't care. He's going to steal all your in anyways. If anything, it's, it's fine for him. He'll just reset the fight, take another 20 hint, and then drop the hammer. And you can see he's going for that Hex. I'm barely sure... He won't even buy that Blink Dagger at all. He knows the fights are happening with or without him. Oh, out comes the Horn as well. They found out a few of these heroes from Infinity Gaming. They want to get rid of the Nyx Assassin, but it doesn't matter because Baosu is on the back line. He's tearing everybody apart. He's got himself a double kill. The Yule Scepter up keeps the uh, DP alive for a little bit longer, but Woody Mo, he's trying to get away, but Philo Rules is the next one that's dead. Baosu, he's caught out three. Woody Mo has to use the BKB and the Blink to get himself far enough away. They lose a the Nyx, but what for? Infinity Gaming, they've lost four, and this is 13k net worth lead, and I think Baosu as well as Rivers 
over. They're just going to march towards that mid lane and try and yeah. get another lane of racks. It's The worst part of it is a lot of that XP is actually going to this Spectre. And like you can see, look at the levels. He's 21, 19, and then the other side is 18 and 16. Like this, He's just a bit too far ahead. We're talking about 2400 health. He's 2700 when he puts those strength threads on. He just can't die. He's so tanky, and the Aegis just ran out. And they don't even worry about that. There's no nothing left for the side of Infinity Gaming. They don't have the BKB or the Slark. They don't have the, sh the Shadow Dance. They don't have the Exorcism either on Philo Rules. So they're just going to take themselves a free lane of racks. They can walk towards bottom as well. Even rotate towards top if they want at this point. There is the, the Egg that's still uh, available. What level is the uh, the Phoenix? So he's level the 12. Phoenix is, yeah, he's finally got 12. He took that tome. He's going to probably take another one now. Oh, the Bar Strike forward. Katastic misses. And that's the only stun coming out from Infinity Gaming. So they have to reset. They have to fall back. And he, Woody Mo can't even get both of these runes. Music is obviously going to clean up both of them bot lane. Yep, so that's more bounty runes, more gold in more the pocket lead. of Darcy. And, um, oh, Woody, Woody Mo, Mo, is he going to get his BKB forced here? No, he finally gets out. Jesus, though. Well, Reverie, he's just going to get himself a free Omni Knight. He does get the actual imprisonment. I think the fight will be kicking off here for Infinity Gaming. The Bar Strike does hit on the two of these heroes with the Empower Misses as well. Ult. Oh, no, if Reverie he gets away from <laughs> it and the hammer drops, they take out Jesus. He's dead for 30 seconds, but he doesn't get any more out of it. He would have liked a couple of those heroes, but the Golem on the backside. They've hit on to three. They take out the egg. Do they have enough to kill it? Uh, Musica, you got to click the egg, my home dog. He does look like... No, he needs, misses there. He needed to start attacking a little bit earlier on. Yeah, Musica just... Bit of a misplay, got a bit greedy, look for another one. But still, at, you commit everything on top of Reverdy to make sure he dies. He's still got half his health pool, a bit more. He drops the hammer and half your team just disappears. He used his BKB as well as the Sound Eclipse, so they don't have that team fight left, but they still have Biasu. He has the Spectral They use the Golem as well. Yeah, so that's two big ultis uh, kind of committed here, but there's no egg on the side of Infinity Gaming, and there's no Exorcism now either. Philo Rules, he's getting gone, and he does get the, uh, the Fusal Blade out as well, and the Laguna Blade on top. Do they have enough damage? Yes, they do. They've taken out two very quickly here. Infinity Gaming, they're crumbling inside of their base. Reverie, he wants more. He's stealing so much into here, but he doesn't have the hammer to drop. Dark Pack has to come out here from Woody Mo as well. Can they get rid of MGC? They do. Biasu inside of the base. He's cleaning them all. He's sending Infinity Gaming back to their own well. 70 seconds until they have Woody Mo back. But I don't think it matters because GG has been called by Ktastic and Darksided. They send Infinity Gaming back. And that is a very clinical game one here for Darksided. Yeah, it looked a bit shaky at the start. Like that Musica pick, we were questioning it. And then I was... Noticing the other two lanes are going pretty well, and it showed. Reverie just absolutely cleaned up. How like he just he got those items, he got that veil, got that drum. He even used himself as bait for two of those fights, and he's like, yeah, you know what, my whole team, they've got my back. As soon as that radiance came up, Bowser came in and just cleaned up. Yeah, he was having a really good lane here against Philo Rules, being able to get that solo kill, being able to pressure him out of lane really hard. And as you said, he even baited for himself because he realized that the Spectre is kind of the star of the show. And yeah. he got that Radiance up, he got that Manta up, and everyone was like, I don't care. You know, I, I was really far ahead, but it doesn't matter because Bowser is the one that's now starting to come into this game, starting to take control, and then they just didn't stop. Dark Darksider, they just kept going. Yeah, I mean, that's what you like to see, though. A team that has the confidence and they know full well, oh, we're missing a few ults doesn't matter. We trust our teammates. We trust Reverie to be able to save us with that Astral Imprisonment. We trust each other to actually commit to one person and clean them up, which as you saw, Xavier and Musica always going on the same target. They knew what was up. The one time that happened differently was the egg at the very end of the game, but by then, it was all she wrote. There was, there was no catching up for Infinity Gaming. Yeah, no catching up indeed here for Infinity Gaming. They lose the first game against Darksided. Can they clean it up here in the second game, or will we be having a quick 2-0 from Darksided? Find out after this very short break. Remember where it started. Your first experiences. The journey you traveled. The journey you love. Remember where it started. And imagine where it will go. Rise on. Uh, that confirms it. You got hipsters. Multiple hipsters? Oh, you never get just one hipster. Uh. Our place is riddled with them. Ah! <gasps> Three natural ingredients. 100% Arabica beans, and you're cold brewing it. What'd you expect? Shoo, hipsters. Scram! So what do we do? You could try sprinkling some instant around the place. Dare cold brew. A fancier fix.
Teamwork was the name of the game here for Darksiders. They were able to take a very convincing win here against the boys of Infinity Gaming. That's right, we're back here for our second game of the ESL AUNZ Championship Season 4. I'm CNC again. Woggy Man, how, how are you feeling if you're an Infinity fan after that? Honestly, they showed sparks of brilliance. I wouldn't be too put off by the fact that Darksiders are a strong team. Infinity Gaming, they had to come in on a brawl. They're still proving themselves. There's no pressure on them. And if you're an Infinity fan, all you want to see them is perform. You don't want to see them throw. You don't want to see them tilt out of their minds. You just want to see a good team play good Dota. And honestly, that's what they did. They crumbled near the end because they just didn't have the same farm power that Darkseid had. And Darkseid is just such a well-rounded team. All right, well, coming into this second game, if you're on the side of Infinity, are you are you trying to lean more towards, you know, a Philo Klinks, maybe even a Philo Huskar for this next game to try and close it out? For a comfort pick, I think there's no reason not to. Like, he looked a bit uncomfortable on the, the Death Prophet, just overextending, which is, it's, it happens. Death Prophet is renowned for that, just thinking, I have four siphons, I'm invincible, they run out, and you just get 
absolutely exploded, which we saw a couple times just happen. He had a lot of faith in Jesus to save him, and it worked out some of the fights. But he just he just was falling behind OD just a bit too much, and he just couldn't keep up. And that that was just the name of the game. He just didn't have that same farming power that we've seen on Philo Rules on some of those more agi and those um more forceful carry mids. Yeah, it really felt like their lack of stuns coming out from Infinity Gaming really hurt them as well, right? We saw so many times that they called out Musica in that off lane, and all they had to rely on was the pounce. And they f it feels like they kind of need more, right? So do you think Infinity Gaming are going to be like, all right, we're just going to try and get rid of this MGC Phoenix or maybe even just the MG uh, the uh, the Jesus yeah. Omni Knight and try and get another stun? Yeah, I, I think so. Like Both of those heroes are good. Both of those heroes together are not great. And they don't save each other either. That's the big thing. Like, if you have a Phoenix Egg, you want something that can straight up save the Egg. Yep. You want to stun. Like, a Sand King is perfect because he can stun through and just disrupt the fight and just annoy them. And they attack slow on um, Epi is huge. But they never had anything to stop the Egg just from getting absolutely cleaned up. Especially with a Lena and an OD, two ranged heroes that can really whack down on that Egg. Yeah, it really does feel like... Uh... They kind of, they, they picked this Phoenix, but they didn't really go for the egg helpers at all. And I, I feel like he only got like one or two eggs off and it was kind of a little bit harder for him to, to get stuff done. Um, especially just because the egg wasn't really working out all too much for them, yeah. right? Definitely. I mean, it, it's always hard picking a Phoenix that doesn't get the levels. Like we saw, he was... Level 10 at, what, 20 minutes? 18 minutes area? He got level 10. And by then, it's just almost too late. Yeah. Like you need to get that GPM talent early. You need to get that uh, fire talent early at 15, the extra fire spirit damage. And if you can't get those, you just start to fall so far behind. And obviously, level 12 is huge, having that extra few attacks on the egg. And we could see what happens. When you don't get those levels, you get killed. Simple as that. <laughs> well, it looks like uh, Infinity Gaming have changed their draft a little bit. They're going to ban out some Bowser heroes rather than just all uh, music heroes. Oh, they, they went one Bowser and they're like, ah, we're back to music. <laughs> <laughs> we're back, we're back. Uh, but the Grimstroke is the first pick here from Darksided. This is a hero that's been utilized quite a lot from a lot of these teams. It kind of doesn't really open up all too much for you. Is it, I'm just trying to think, is there any heroes that really hate playing against the Grimstroke? We're talking about them all a little bit earlier on, right? Uh, Any Mage hates it. Absolutely hates it. But those kind of high mobility carries. Lifesteal is pretty bad for it too because you can get binded together with someone and get silenced out of nowhere. Um, but just generally speaking, high mobility course. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, we'll see how Infinity Gaming is decided at their draft. I feel like they should probably start along the lines of maybe like what they did in the last game. You know, they went for the Sand King very early on. They went for the Omni Knight as well. Maybe not the Omni Knight in the Positive 5 because it felt like it was a little bit awkward. Yeah. Maybe just try and double down a bit more on... Well, on if they want to just all in on team fight, we've seen it before. Like, you can just get that Warlock. You can get anything in the offlane that's decent. Centaur was decent. Um... I'd like to see like something like a Slardar has happened as well, so you can get that burst potential, and it's a really stable, solid pause three. Yep. Um, but with Infinity Gaming, they're always going to draft around Woody Mo and Philo Rules. That's always going to happen. Whoa. So they're going to go straight for the Whoa. Warlock, and what is their second pick right now? What? Obviously, you want to try and combine it with a bit more team Ooh. fight. Ooh, the MGC Enigma. Okay, I like this. I like this. Yeah, just you know, get that get that big black hole, which is usually a bait more often than not in the early <laughs> game. I mean, it's, it's all about the threat of the black hole, right? Like, you see an Enigma running towards you at a tier 1 tower, and you're like, oh, god damn, is he going to, uh, you know, just black hole our entire team, or is he going to just pump fake it, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, and also the fact that his other spells are probably better. Like, I know that's a hot take. Oh, speaking of hot takes, your yeah, favourite hero. Yeah, boy. We get to see some Wraith King. I don't um, get to see my hero, because he gets big. <laughs> your hero is too good. My hero is mediocre. Um, but... I feel like this is a music hero. He has played it quite a lot. Um, it is also could be a Bowser hero. I mean, not a Bowser hero. Actually, yes, a Bowser. Yes. Are you going to say Poyo? I was going to say Poyo. <laughs> I always get baited so hard. Um, I mean, I like that. It's a it's a good combo with Grimstroke. Obviously, Inkswell, you run in. Double Wraithfire Blast if you really need it. And the general slow from Inkswell, like the Inkswell stun into um, Stroke. Uh -huh. And then you can just jump on top with Skeletons. It's just so much damage, so much... Like, just absolute nuisance yep. in lane. Yeah, and it also does mean that if they do commit something as big as a Black Hole on a Wraith King, he's going to respawn. This is, is what we were talking about in that in that game with uh, Shutdown as well as uh, Flashpoint. You know, you pick this Wraith King because of these big teamfight ulties. You know, they do commit a few of them. They're just going to respawn anyways. And, and it worked out for them. Yep. Like, Shutdown, he had three lives. 
He copped the first load of ultimates. He got back up. And they're like, you know what? More <laughs> agonizing bonds. He's like, okay, fine, guys. Fine. You can stop now. I've got three lives. Just just, just relax. And it kind of, yeah, you just kind of run out of steam, right? And that's the, the, the downfall of these big team fight uh, ultimates is the fact that they do have such large cooldowns. And I mean, if MGC gets to a point where he has refresher, then, you know, maybe he can be a little bit scary towards this Wraith King. But I like this uh, draft so far from Dark Side. They do get rid of the clinks as well, trying to get uh, move Philo rules out of that uh, comfort role. We saw Hugh on the Death Prophet. He didn't do too bad against Reverie in the mid lane, but, I mean, you're playing against Reverie. He's he's, one of the... He just seemed a bit over-eager. I think that was the biggest issue he had with the Death Prophet. He just wanted to dive. Yep. Um, and it just didn't work out for him because Darksider were prepped and ready. They had so many stuns. They actually just had the Astral to slow it down and reset the fight. And there's just nothing you can do as a Death Prophet if you're getting stun-locked. Yeah. They do ban out the Rubik as well, which is one of the big counters to the Enigma. Being able to steal that black hole as he is channeling it. What do we do in the game we go for? They've got both their supports, I guess. Um, I, th I, I assume that's a pause four. Yeah, I think that's the MGC classic right there. Yeah. They've banned out a few less pause threes, though. So they've left the pool a bit more open for themselves as well. Um, honestly, you could go with a Phoenix and just all in on team fight. Yeah, you It'd could. It'd be funny. I'm what what sure. about something like a Centaur? Oh, he. I'm up, I'm moving up in the world, guys. I'm becoming an analyst to a to a tournament near you. Tournament near you. Just CNC you know. analyst. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He'll get there. Okay, one prediction does not make a good <laughs> analyst. I mean, I've been fairly correct today. You know, I've oh, got we've more been than good just today, that but yeah. like, they've been picking really nice drafts. Like, there's none of the actually outside of the Ricky. The Ricky is <laughs> just like, oh, what are you doing? I mean, but like, that's the game that they won. Yeah. So I mean, we can't yeah, really I talk mean, that bad about Anderson it. Others on Hero, like I'm gonna say, was Ricky, yeah. but at the same time, I still question the pick. <laughs> like, I don't care if you won the game. I'm still gonna be like, are yeah. you sure? Yeah, well, we'll have to see how Darkseider respond with this because Wraith King and Grimstroke, they're all decently okay against the Centaur Warrunner, but you need ways of dealing with this Stampede, right? You need ways of catching up to them or, you know, locking them down inside of that Stampede so it's not just a, you know, press well, button and we can reset. Grimstroke does do a very good job for that. He just binds the two together, and if they're not, like, picture perfect in the same mentality, they just run in different directions. <laughs> and, like, it's like a rubber band. It just snaps them back in. <laughs> Okay, so we do have a Musica hero. This is the Leshrac coming out for them. Well, Another Rev hero. can play that too. It's su this is oh, such true? a flex draft for them because so far they're Pos four, Pos five, both can play Grimstroke. Pos three, Carry, both can play Wraith King. Reverie and Musica both can play Leshrac. And how do you draft against that? You're like, ah, uh, they could be anywhere. They're going to play musical chairs. <laughs> musical uh, heroes. Musica chairs, yeah. <laughs> Musica chairs. I mean, it is also one of those heroes that even if he does get caught in the black hole, he can still pump out damage, right? If he gets that dive sure, bomb yeah. off, if he gets the pulse over off before he gets caught, they still do have a lot of damage that come through from, the, from those heroes. And yeah. They don't really rely all too much on auto attack in the center where he starts getting those retaliate stacks up. They can try and burst him down. And this is kind of the um, the positive that Dark Side would have. They have a combination of physical damage as well as magical damage. Because yeah. we saw in the games where Godot was playing these offline heroes, he pretty much just had to itemize you know, either a Crimson Guy or a Pipe. And then, or both. <laughs> or both. But, it, you know, if you're able to itemize so early on with something like a Crimson Guard and then mitigate 90% of the damage that's coming out from the enemy team, then it feels a lot better for you, right? Oh, for sure. Um... The problem with Centaur right now is he's going to get kited a lot. Even with the Stampede, they're just going to stun lock him down, just annoy him, be a nuisance. There's nothing he can really do to stop that. There's no item that can save him from that because even if he gets a blink, every single one of those heroes has a stun or a silence. Or both. <laughs> yeah, that is true. It's going to be hard for him to try and get stuff done, but they are chunking through quite a lot of their reserve time. That is Infinity Gaming. How are they going to get this done? I'm not quite sure what their next pick is going to be. They do need to get their core picks, right? They need to get yeah, their, I, their I mid lane and their pause one. I think this should be their carry pick because they've seen the Leshrac, they've seen the Wraith King. They need something that's going to build an early diff blade. Or a life sealer, apparently. Life sealer against Leshrac and Wraith King, though. Um, Surely that doesn't feel too great. I think you end up maxing Diabolic Edict, so he can't really deal with you. Yep. But it is something that can play a decently fast tempo. It's a good combo with Centaur. You jump in, jump out. Um... It deals with Grimstroke reasonably well until you are playing next to your team. So you just have to go for solo picks. Um, it's just a solid pick that doesn't really do anything exceptional, but it's well balanced. Exactly. It's going to be hard to see what they can get done. This is a fairly straightforward draft from both these teams. Dark Sided. They need their pos four, right? They need uh, their Xavier hero. Um, what about Lion? You know, that's a hero that I haven't seen all too much, but I feel like he's great. I was I really like Lion that. or Shadow Shaman would both be good. Just something with a high level of stun, bit of DPS, yep. and a nice push. 
Um, plus Lion Double Finger, Double Hex, Double Mana Drain, yep. <laughs> Double Earth Spike. It plus is the new set's hot, so... Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. We're all about cosmetics here in the ESL Studios. Um, the big thing with Dark Side, they don't need anything right now. Like, when you talk about what someone needs in a draft, so far they've got a lot of sun, they've got a lot of push, they've got really tanky cores, and they've got a nice support that really well rounds yep. that. So they basically, they have two luxury picks where they can just be like, treat myself, I want whatever I want. Okay, that's fair enough. As you said, they have ticked pretty much all their boxes already, but Dark Side of the Dark, just trying to find that perfect pick for themselves. You know, we we're talking about the Lion, the Shadow Shaman, which would be great picks for them. I know Xavier does play them quite a lot. Even, what about a Tiny? Do you think a Tiny wouldn't be too bad for them? The problem with Tiny, he's he's setting pace, and the rest of his heroes are actually somewhat faster than him. And Park, I like that. Okay. It's a nice, it's a nice solid mid that won't get counterpicked to Oblivion. Yep. And it's another flex pick. Because music can play it. Yeah, that is true. Musica can play this park. They can send the last track towards that mid lane, depending on the, the final pick from Infinity Gaming. This is usually how you try and deal with this last, last pick, right? Because Infinity Gaming, they have the overall final counter. But if you have these ambiguous heroes like the last track, like the park, then it means you can just go, okay, you've picked this hero. You can't counterpick them both. We're just going to send whichever one that deals better in that mid lane. Yeah, and it puts so much pressure on Infinity Gaming right now because they need a mid hero yep. that not only carries the late game, but can get them there. Yeah. So they need something with a lot of AOE stun, a lot of AOE damage, and just generally a lane dominating hero. And there aren't that many that are left. Like I'm thinking maybe an Invoker, but uh -huh. Invoker versus 16 stuns is quite rough. Yeah. It does feel pretty bad, especially because there's a lot of AOE that they can deal with the um, the Ghost Walk as well. So we, mm. you know, it isn't just to get out of free. Oh. I mean, that wouldn't be bad. It does, it does allow them to play a lot quicker against a Wraith King as well because he doesn't rely so heavily on his cooldown to, to kill the Wraith King. Yeah. They just, Infinity Game has just put themselves in a rut where there aren't enough mids that Philo rules can objectively play well yep. that are viable. Yep. I feel like Pugner is one of his better heroes as well. He does uh, well, play a really good Pugner. That's what I'm thinking because they need magic damage, obviously. They're relying a lot on Life Stealer and Centaur to have physical. Warlock is just a everything damage because... Yeah. Fatal Bonds is still broken. Yeah. <laughs> They've left it in too long. We're, I'm glad I haven't seen a Grimstroke Warlock yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that combination has not been um, picked up yet because that is absolutely disgusting. And a double Fatal Bonds into a team fight is ridiculous because we saw earlier on today how much damage this, uh, this Fatal Bonds can do. But Dark Sided, with their final pick here, they need da -da -da -da, they need their plus four, right? They need another. I think so, but like they. <sighs> They could just pick something like a Tusk. I've talked about it a lot. I yep. like that hero. It's just all around. Clockwork would work pretty well. It's it separate the fight quite a bit. It's just an annoying hero to deal with. And it sets up quite well with a Shrak and Grimstroke. But there's honestly, there's too many heroes they can pick. Yep. Um, there's just, they've left their draft so open that it might not even be a plus four. That might be a plus four less Shrak. That is true. They could pick up something else here. But it looks like eight seconds in, they have... To figure it out very, very soon. With three seconds left, or four seconds left on the clock, they're going to go for a Bounty Hunter. So, again, this could be a Musica hero. Musica can play four out of five of these heroes. I haven't seen his Grimstroke, so I'm not going to say five. But <laughs> Grimstroke's not the hardest hero in the world. That is true. Um, and that's actually, that is just a great pick, because they've got a lot of team fight massive ultimates. How to stop that? Constant pickoffs. That is and true. And Bounty Hunter is fantastic for abusing pickoffs. And they can also play really high tempo with that track as well, right? For you sure, know, yeah. They get a lot of these picks, they can start pushing these towers, and then that's when they start snowballing this advantage. And yeah, I really like this Bounty Hunter pick for them. It provides them a little bit of uh, physical damage as well with that Janata steal. And oh, one second left on the pick, and they, yeah, they go Death Prophet. They go straight for the Death Prophet. Okay. Um, they don't have that hero that can make her into this crazy, unkillable tank like they did in the first one with the Omni Knight, but it's, it's a risky Death Prophet pick. Because there's so many stuns. And we saw what happened last game with the Heavenly Grace, with the Guardian Angel. He still got blown up. This time, you're going to be up against the Puck, which is honestly a 50-50 lane. Because yeah. he can dodge every single one of your Quip, quip Swarms. But you got to use them anyway. Yeah, that is true. Well, we'll see how this mid lane does go. It looks like it will be a Xavier Bounty Hunter as well. We're going to have Biasu taking up that Wraith King. We're interested to see how Biasu's uh, cosmetic game is because he's his cosmetic game on... Uh... Oh, no, it's the basic set. Okay. All right, Dark Sided, you lose. I'm sorry. This is how, how the, the world goes. You, you don't get the uh, the proper thing. Also, Jesus does have the uh, the Monkey Golem as well. So he's got that new Golem kicking around as well. Yeah, MGC. the double Monkey Golem on the loading screen. I love that. <laughs> MGC is uh, flexing that Enigma set as well. I, I, You know, Infinity Game, you win just purely on Cosmetic Game. You know, Dark Hearted, please, please step it up. Look, Come on. If Cosmetics were the way to win, I'm sure Fury I would, be would have a 100% win rate. He has everything. <laughs> that is true. 
Fury's um, uh, cosmetic game is very impressive. I got to be honest though, the fact that Baosu doesn't have any items for Wraith King, and Wraith King has like seventeen different swords, and he doesn't even own one. I mean, I think that what might not be a stock one. No, that, that is the stock standard Wraith King. That is one hundred percent stock standard Wraith King. Yeah. Well, either way, hopefully he plays it better than his cosmetic game is. All right, Woggy, who are you picking here after seeing both these drafts? Darksiders lineup is just so easy to execute. Like I always talk about, just ease of access. How many yep. stuns do you have? They've got 14 and 15 of them. It's insane. And that's before you even count the Grimstroke combos with the Wraith King and obviously the Puck Coil straight into a Grimstroke combo, straight into Bounty Hunter, double track, double shuriken. Um, there's just too many things that are really easy to do. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to have to pick the uh, the Dark Side of Drafts as well just because Wraith King is purely on it. Also, the fact that the way they played that last game was really well. You know, Woody, I mean, Reverie is playing really well on all these heroes. And even Baosu is really starting to step up on that carry role, making sure that it is not just the Reverie show. And obviously, Music is on his uh, stock standard less track, and he always puts on a show on that less track. Yeah, so. he, his less track is honestly one of the best in Oz. Not many people I, play I believe, it anymore. Does he fairness. still have the, the, the world record for the fastest blood zone on less track? I believe he had like the top three Aww. times for it or something. When he was playing ages ago, when he was playing on Can't Say Wiss, like... I feel, years I feel like that's cheating to say he does because of the fact that when he was buying it, he was buying it first item in a t in a lineup that gave him everything. Yeah. So you're never going to have that window again. And also, Bloodstone's not that viable anymore. I mean, somebody can do it. Somebody but can do someone it. would have to like double check for me if that actually is true. I don't know if it you're is, to be honest. Ooh. Um, we might we might get the admins, the uh, the studio, to have a look. <laughs> Check up on some uh, yeah. some uh, rules for us. Not rules, um, some records. See if Musica still is one of the best less racks. But we'll have to see. But either way, it still is a stock center hero for Dark Side. They played really well around it, and they've got really high tempo, right? Oh, for sure. Like, look at this lineup here. When they get level six, versus you have a five-minute cooldown spell on Enigma, or three and a half-minute cooldown spell on Enigma. You have a really long cooldown spell. Um, on Warlock and Stampede's two minutes to start with. There's going to be a lot of fights where they just have nothing left and you're getting tracked, you're getting ran out, you're getting stun locked to oblivion and there's just nothing you can do about it. Yeah, it does feel like... That is kind of the tale of today, right? It, t it feels like high tempo versus team fight. Who wins? And from today, it looks like that uh, high tempo does win out eventually, but you know, it does kind of also feel like it is a little bit of a team play, but... We'll have to see how Darkseid had put it up, and Xavier looks like he's going to go towards that top side of the map, trying to secure this banner in for his Wraith King. Yeah. Uh, I've also just been whispered by ear. It actually still is Musica. He still yep. holds the record. It's from 2014, so I don't know how much credence you want to put into that. I'm going to put a lot of credence onto it, because I remember watching that game. I oh. vividly remember that game. That, that's a throwback and a half, if ever I've heard one. Uh, um, either way, it looks like uh, Infinity Gaming, they are just getting bullied out here by Xavier. Nobody wants to lose their gold. Everyone's like, it's my gold. Xavier, stay away. Yeah, and oh, and I love this. They've committed Reverie bot lane just to annoy Woody Mo. He's gonna lose half his health pool here, if not more, because um, he's gone greedy to get the feast at level uh, level one as well. He could die here, honestly. Doesn't have the rage or oh, the splitter. Just, just misses. misses. All right, Musica, you've docked one of your. Uh... That's a, that's a negative one minute on uh, Bloodstone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Musica, you just lost your record, my friends. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go play some real like tier four Dota. You <laughs> see, just rush Bloodstone. Well, well, it looks like Xavier's taking quite a lot of, uh, uh, putting a quite a lot of damage here on a K-Tastic, who is getting those retaliate stacks up, so it's it's okay for them. How do you think they're going to be playing? He didn't level it. He's only got the two. Oh no! How do you think they're going to be playing this uh, this Enigma here for MDC? Do you think he's going to go for the greedy kind of jungle build? Um, I think he has to. Like he's already committed for the boots, so it doesn't look like he's prepping to play the lane. It looks like he just wants to deny another range creep. Um. The lane's kind of going to be a wash anyway, because it, it seems that they've committed to a trial lane. Tobbs, Baosu, and Xavier's hanging around here. So they're really happy with a 1v1 mashup with Musica versus Woody Mo. Um, he just has that much confidence in his Lesh Rack, I guess. I mean, it is a, a half decent lane for the Lesh Rack. You know, obviously the Pulse Nova and the, uh, the Lightning isn't too great against the Rage, but as we were saying, that Diabolic Dedic, when it starts getting leveled up, Woody Mo, he can't really fight inside of it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, he actually is just committed. He's, he's playing Axe right now. I mean, this is pretty much how most of these offlaners get played now, right? You get the double stout shield, you double up your wave, you try and kill as many as you can. If you're an Axe, if you're a Centaur, if you're a Darkseer, you try and kill as many as you can. But, yeah. you know, if Tobbs as well as Xavier are on top of it, they can do quite a lot of damage. He's taking quite a bit now. They do get the stun with the Inkswell, and they're 
I've sold a bit of his damage with the Janata, excuse me. And yeah, he's just gone straight he's gone straight back to the lane. Uh, he'll get absolutely nothing out of the lane though, that's the problem. Bowser's just gonna free farm under his tower. Um, they've already committed. Xavier's gone to the bot lane as well. So they've they've given up. Absolutely like, alright mate, you can do whatever you want. And uh, they're just gonna try and pull it back in here. But looks like bottom, Mizuka is doing really well on his less rack. I like this though, because Xavier doesn't really need to be anywhere. He just wanted Musica to get level two, and then he can come into the lane and you know get a couple Janatas here and there. Nothing special. Doesn't really have to commit overly hard. Jesus could get killed if he gets caught out badly, but other than that, it's going to be a static lane. Yeah, it does feel like um, this bounty hunter is one of those heroes that you just kind of like. You're like, okay, mate, you can just run around, you yoink some gold wherever you can, and then, you know, just try and be a bit of a nuisance once you get that level 6 track. And yeah, wait, wait till 6 is the big part of that, because until he gets 6, he's pretty useless. He's just a one-click trick pony. Yeah. Pretty much just running up and trying to yoink some gold. Right. Okay, That's not a bad thing, though. It's better than a lot of other plus 4s. That is true. You know, things like Earthshaker, where you pretty much just throw off Fisher and that's your, that's your one and done. Yeah. I, I still hate that he's a pos 4 over a pos 3 nowadays. And sometimes even a pos 5. It just feels so rough to watch a 28-minute Blink Dagger Earthshaker play Dota. I mean, but then it's also super exciting when you see an 11-minute pos 4 Dagger, you know? Yeah. But like, imagine if it's offline, you get like a 7-minute <laughs> Treads Blink, and you're like, oh, I'm rich. Yeah, it does feel pretty good. Who do you think is going to make the first rotation here out of uh, both these teams? Do you think it's going to be Infinity uh, Gaming with their Enigma once he gets level they six? Might as well, like, Enigma might as well keep farming. He's farming up a storm already. Level three, he's he's really holding down the levels because K-Tastic is kind of getting bodied. Yep. He's run out of my, um, regen now. He's got the TP still. He might look for another cart. But rotations-wise, I don't think many things are going to happen. Well, Mizuka's trying to do what he can here against Jesus, but Xavier's just in the back line just tickling away. They take quite a lot of damage here on the side of Dark Side, but I think they're okay with it because they have more than enough regen. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're already slightly coming ahead in the lanes. You can see Baus is the big one. He's 20 and 12 against a 6 and 0 Sentinel. And he's just only going to get faster and faster. If he starts committing these skeletons to start taking these big camps here, which are pretty easy to do, like you just commit them, you can stand here, you can take both the XPs, you can commit to which one ever one you, you want the gold for. Um, and plus, if your support's pretty good, he can stand here, make sure the skellies come all the way here, and you get all this gold. And obviously, the support loves it, because he gets the XP. Yep. Ah. Surprisingly enough, he didn't get the uh, the level in Vlad Zora. Considering he's tanking so many of these creeps underneath his tower, I thought it might have been the right play. Because he's not going to use Wraithfire Blast for a while, right? I don't think he'll use Wraithfire Blast at all, but it's more the fact that he hits a point where he wants to use it, and he won't have it. Yep. Um, Vlad Zora would have been good. Don't get me wrong, um, but some people just don't like that kind of playstyle. And obviously, Bo Bowser's committed pretty heavily to the fact that once level 6 comes on the Grimstroke, he wants to just have that max stun ready yep. to go. That is true. He's going to have those uh, maxed out skillies pretty soon as well, and that's when he's going to be able to start taking this tier 1 tower. Yeah, Kajastic is uh, taking a few of those creep waves away from him, but as soon as he stops doing it, uh, this, uh, this tier 1 tower will easily go down for uh, Bowser. I mean, he's still, he's still holding these skeletons. He's, he really doesn't want to have to use them. Oh, they're going to try and find K-Tastic here. They do come forward with the skellies on top with the Inkswell stun. Do they get it? No, it was just outside of the range for K-Tastic. I don't think he has enough HP. Poyo, has, I mean, Biasu's going to have another Ray Fire Blast in a second. Does he find him inside of the trees? Nice little juke path. He does get forward, but the Skelly Bros, they're on top of him. And Biasu gets the first blood here. And the Bros take the tower too. Look at that. That's just loyalty straight up. Loyalty to the one true king. Who loses all of his skellies, but he gets pretty much his entire Midas at five minutes into the game. So Bouncy yeah, is going to be skyrocketing pretty in the pretty good. He's pretty rich. Like We're looking at the net worth already. He's already starting to get 600, 700 ahead. And that's before he used the Midas. That's before he starts using these skellies to actually farm. He held them just to fight. That is true. Reverie, he gets a free solo kill there. I think there was a rotation from Tobbs as well as Xavier towards that mid lane. So Filler Rules goes down again on this yeah. Death Prophet. It's already 2-0. to zero. Yeah. I mean, this is the problem I have with just farming Enigma Jungle. You can't save your lanes. It's like you come into the lane, yeah, sure, you've got six little um, Eidolons going, but they don't really do that much damage until you get on top of them. And they can't get on top of them early because you don't have stuns to line them up. It just seems like you've sacrificed a lane to get an early mech, to get an early home of the Dominator, to what it, like whatever you're going for. And it doesn't really work out half the time. 
Oh, Xavier does get himself a kill on Jesus towards the bottom side of the map. And Woody Mo taking quite a little damage here. They do get the split earth, but Woody Mo dodges it there with the rage. So Reverie, as at level six, isn't close enough to use that Dream Call just yet. Um, and Kaitasek, he is getting pressured so hard. Biasu in the trees he's gets found out by MJC. He's going to come forward with the mango. They have the Skilly Bros coming in. Do they have the Ray Fire Blast? They do. But it does get stunned up by the Malphus. So Biasu is getting himself far enough away. Do they have enough damage with the Idolos? I don't think they do. So these eventually will go down. But Hobbs picks up the MGC. Woody Mo. Trying to trade hits here with Xavier. And Kaitasic doesn't want to go home. He's trying to stay around as much as he can for this XP. But it's too little too late. He's three three levels below Wraith King. Um, he's going to have to commit to the jungle eventually. It's just a matter of when, not if. But then, if he commits to the jungle, then when where's MGC supposed to go? Does MGC start taking this lane now? Well, that's the problem they have. They've oh, got Biasu. too many farming heroes right now. I mean, not and... Biasu, Jesus. He's the one that gets the kill. And he's 5-0 and zero already right now. And we're talking about Darkseid having an easier draft to execute. And coming it... this early on just means it's a lot easier for Darkseid, right? Yeah, they're doing this so well as well. Like, they even went greedy. It's not like they didn't go farming items. They went the Midas. And, like, they went Bounty Hunter, who's going straight... He's just straight into the face boots. I wouldn't be so yeah, we're seeing the only like stable build here and everyone else is playing greedy. He's going straight for the travels. <laughs> it's um, kind of you know, you're winning this game fairly early on, right? And you can just go for that greedy build, you're like, okay, I can start being putting my pressure across the map and not letting Infinity Gaming get back into this game because pretty much the only way they're gonna get back into this game is if Enigma comes out big with a with a lot of these items and they can start team fighting properly, but you know, it gets to a point where Infinity Game, I mean, uh, Darkseid just put so much pressure on Infinity Game that they can't even do that. So, Kaytastic is going to keep trying to cut these creeps and try and get what he can. But, as you said, this Wraith King, he already got a five-minute Midas. He's yeah. going to be skyrocketing in the levels. He's almost level eight. And ah, he's going to start pushing the this tower. This could be the skellies. tower here, too, because he's got the Skelly Bros, 600 health, and here we go, yeah. He does it before he gets eight, though, so he misses out on that one Skelly. That one extra little... Yeah, extra little homie. So they're going to start clicking towards this tier 1 tower, they do glyph it, and they're going to have mass TPs coming out from Infinity Gaming, but I don't think this is going to be enough. The Skeleton's going to start respawning, they're doing quite a lot of uh, damage here. Kaitasi comes in with the Hoof Stop, eventually does stun out of Bowser. Do they have enough damage to take out the tower? No, they don't. is the one that picks it up, so the Phantom's Embrace comes forward. Very Fire Blast here on a Jesus, and he doesn't have the move speed to get away. So Tobbs is the one that picks that up, and they do get the Inks well stun as well. Bowser, he has another Ray Fire Blast coming off cooldown, another couple of seconds with the crit on top. The Centaur, he's certainly dead. The Ray Fire Blast on top, Reverie wants, wants the it. kill. <laughs> He does get it, because Bowser can't really dive, because he doesn't have that reincarnate, but uh, Reverie making that rotation, they get themselves another kill, and it is 7-0 to zero at 9 minutes into this game. Yeah, I I think this is going to start to get really rough for Infinity Gaming. They haven't got the items yet that they need. Like, you can see he's going towards this mech, but he hasn't quite got it yet. He's so underleveled on Jesus. Like, you need that level 6 really badly on Morlock to start playing Dota. Um, and on the other side, you're starting to see, they're getting their levels up. They're 4.5, that's going to be 6 with the Tome. Xavier's basically at six once the tome comes up as well, and he's already quite farmed. Like you're looking at the net worth, and he's sitting above the centaur. I mean, that's always a, a feels good man moment if you're a pos four and you're doing better than the offlaner. Yeah. Because on the in the fairness, Enigma is quite farmed. That is true. He's doing quite well. He's at the same uh, as his uh, fill out rules. They almost have the mechanism up already for MGC. Yeah. The problem is, like, I don't know what you can do with this mechanism. The rest of your team is quite a bit behind, and it's only seeming to get worse. Woody Mo's keeping up pretty well with this Midas, but it's starting, it's starting to look rough. Yep. It does not look good here for Infinity Gaming with this early 3k net worth lead. I do get the silence coming up at Reverie. He just has that orb, jorts himself away, and Villa rules can't get He's got the travels now, too, so he's going to start ganking. So much. Yeah, I wanted to see if uh, Bowser is going to go straight for a Radiance on this uh, Wraith King. You reckon? Oh, that's an armlet. He's going to go for an armlet. Oh, man, I hate this item on this throw. <laughs> now, see, I like it if you if you want to just straight end the game really quickly, which is, I feel like, the mentality that Darkseid want right now. That is true. It does, it does allow him to become this tanky brawler, get into a point where he is very scary, but making quite a lot of damage here. It does heal up. That Vladimir's aura. But bottom side, it looks like there is a fight going on. I think uh, Woody Mo did have to jump inside of a creep. Oh, so he does. Back Comes out, back though. to full HP. And with the science coming out on Reverie, don't think he has enough HP to get away with the John. He does, but it doesn't break the uh, the Soul Siphon. Do they have enough damage? No, the auto attack. Reverie, he goes down to the Ghost from Philo Rule. The DD rune did enough for him. Yeah, big DD rune saving that kill. Otherwise, it would have been an absolute disaster. Commit everything you have. Stampede. Life still infest. Obviously, using this exorcism. 
um, and getting nothing. That would have been an absolute shocker for them. They get they get a kill on the board. It's not going to be a twenty to zero or whatever. It's going to happen. They're starting to starting to climb it back. They're two k down. Well, Woody Mo. He does get the Rage TP away. They have no way of cancelling that TP, so he gets himself away, but they want to get Jesus. They have the track out, so this will be a nice amount of gold for the Musica. He does eventually get the uh, the stun with the Ink Swell. So I take that down, and Bowser takes out the mid lane as well with his Skelly Bros. Has that armor coming out already. Level 10 yeah. on this Raid King is uh, pretty scary. Yeah, 500 gold as well for killing a support. <laughs> the power of track, and that's even with the nerfs. That is true. That is quite a lot of gold going in the pocket of Xavier as well. Yeah. And, you know, he gets towards those drums. Maybe he gets a, a super urn as well. That's where he can start being scary towards somebody like Villa Rules. Well, he can he can honestly go like a solar crest or something and just straight up one shot people. There's nothing stopping him from just doing this over and over again. There's nothing Villa Rules can really do to stop it. You don't have the team to rotate right now. Enigma's still farming. Like he's got the mech now. But they when does he start using this black hole? I mean, he has an arcane rune now. I wouldn't even have leveled it to like level eleven, to be honest. Yeah. There's not. There's not any real point. Like, this. The scare tactics are there, yes, but I don't think there's ever a time other than solo picks. Like, if you can find a solo pick right now, just dump it on anyone. You find a pause five, just put it on them. It doesn't matter. So it looks like they're going to be trading a T1 for a T2. Jesus is the one that makes the rotation towards bottom, but he's oh, going to get he's found dead. out. He gets tracked up. Bowser is the one that's coming here. He's going to throw out the clicks, and that was a big crit coming up from them. They have to use the stair P from Ktastic. Woody Mo's tipping in front of the tower as well. He has that rage coming up, but how long does it take him to TP in? It looks like it takes him a long time. Woody Mo gets tracked up as well. He wants to jump inside of Ktastic. But Ktastic is running himself just a little bit too far away. Bowser doesn't have the HP to keep armor toggling, and they eventually do take that T2 tower. Yeah. A lot of commit just to lose the tower, but they're not they're not losing as much. At least they're st they're starting to stem the bleeding a bit. It's it's up to a six k lead, but they can definitely come back if they start taking these towers with this exorcism. They needed to get level twelve. They need this Yules pretty badly, and then they can maybe make something of it because they haven't really connected with a chaotic offering fatal bonds yet. He only just got the level six. Yeah, I was gonna say I feel like Jesus only just got his level six yeah. because I didn't really see. He's, he only just got the time, so. This is the window they really want to fight, especially because Black Hole's still up. They might as well commit it on anyone. Like, if Xavier comes in auto-attacks right now, just straight up dump it on him. Well, he does have the auto-attack, but I don't think he gets the uh, the envies. But the rest of Dark Side are coming for it. MGC, they get Soul Bound together. They're going to use the Exorcism out. Out comes the Rock, hits onto two of these heroes. It is only the supports. How much do they commit to try and kill these heroes? So they've committed the Exorcism as well as the Golem. Man, that monkey looks cool. Yeah, it, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty nice set. If we're talking aesthetics, that's on the top of the list. Look at, look at the way he walks here. That is so cool. You know, you're pulling a little bit away from the game, but and I, I'm a man of cosmetics, and that is a, a fine-ass cosmetic. Oh, looks like they do get the uh, the the midnight pulse coming forward. He has the armor to try and uh, dodge Ward away, but they've all eventually side. taken Jesus out. He gets the armor toggle away with the uh, the dream call sitting there. It does give Xavier enough uh, room to move. They're going to come forward. Musica sitting on the backside. Doesn't have that much HP. Do you get the track forward? Reverie comes in. They do get the silence coming Bousy out. wants in. Bousy wants in. He still does have that reincarnate when he wants to come forward. But no, how much damage can they do with uh, Philo rules? But yeah, he ran out of mana, so he has to be careful with these armor toggles. They're going to come forward with the stampede. They want to try and get some of these kills. Bowsu with the armor toggle. They eventually do stop his TP. So he has no way of getting this reincarnate off. How much of this armor toggle can he get done? He does have a little bit more. Does he get it in? He wants to use that armor toggle again. He does get enough HP. So I think Bowsu is just going to be able to toggle these boys to the end of the earth. They can't catch up to him. There's no shrine. They, like, he had to walk all the way back, but now he's probably just going to start farming again. Yeah, and then you see he's back to farming. No worries. Um, Every. He's looking for an in here. He doesn't have an orb to get away, so he has to be very, very careful. Can throw out his orb now, but if the silence comes out from the uh, Death Prophet, he has to be careful. So that he was pretty perfect. He just gets in that r little Roshan pit so he can't get killed. Um, they, I, I don't want to say they're toying with them, but it kind of feels like Dark Side are playing around pretty heavily here. Yeah, it looks like they are. They are very far ahead. 7k in at 15 minutes into the game. They have found out Jesus. They get the split earth. They get the Inkswell start on top. They get the track. Oh, Jesus. And he's super dead. That is a lot of gold going the way. I believe they just used the Stampede as well. Did they? Oh, no. no it's no, it's been did. down for a bit. Okay. They probably used that in that mid fight area. Well, uh, does he even have Vanguard yet on uh, Ktastic? He's, he's quite poor. Looks like he's committing directly for a blink. That makes sense. Like, you need some kind of initiation with this golem. You need something to actually distract them. Obviously, Enigma's gone for this mech, which is, like, probably the smartest way of playing it if you don't go for the Helm of the Dominator. Um, 
So you need that blink. You need yep. something to start a fight because you can't just rely on lifestyle to walk in pretty brainlessly. And like if you're if you're relying on that and he gets stun locked, you're gonna look pretty useless. Yeah, well, now comes the spit earth out on an MJC. He has the mech to keep <gasps> himself up, but he cancels his own black hole! He thought he wanted to use it, he but he doesn't completely. pump fake it. Uh, he hits no one there, and that's, that's that's the first black hole of the game, and it's a complete whiff, and you still die anyway. Uh, and Reverie wants more. He's found Jesus. If they get the track out here on the Warlock, this will be good for them. He does use a Golem. He's on the two of these heroes. Reverie does dodge it, but they eventually do take out the Warlock. So much damage for Soulbind, keeping these heroes stuck together. But I think they're going to take out Jesus because they do. Reverie jumps back in on this puck. He has to be careful. There's no silence here on the Philo rules. The puck. He does have that Yule Scepter if he needs to use it. He's so fast. He's going to throw the Orb travels first. Oh, oh no, he... Just got himself killed. He is going to come back in. He has a little bit of HP, but I don't think he can dodge any of this. He does dodge a little bit of the stun there, but he will just die deny himself to the tower. So not one person gets the gold. They all do. And that's going to cancel what he most TP. That is the most I love that. thing. I actually love that straight up. Just be like, you know what? I hate you. <laughs> It does mean that he has to walk towards this uh, this bottom creep. He wave. lost about six creeps for it. It's it's actually a huge loss because that 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 wave, two of the, two or three of the units died. Lucky the catapult and three archers were still there. So like that's the big part you're TPing yeah. for. Um, but even with that clowny stuff from Rev, the net worth still skyrocketing upwards. It's up to nine now, and doesn't look like it's slowing down. No, it and does not. The XP is slowing down at least. And back oh Xavier got picked. Yes, it looks like he got caught out there by Philo Rules. They were able to catch out the uh, the Bounty Hunter there, which is nice for them. But can they get more? They are starting to more march forward. They don't have the uh, the Black Hole for another 105 seconds. Uh, they've got the Battle of the Boys in the mid lane. <laughs> the Eidolons versus the Skeletons. Well, the Skeletons can respawn, so the Eidolons look like they're losing that fight pretty heavily. <laughs> he just fed so much. That's the problem. They're worth five gold each. It's yeah. so sad. You've got to kill them twice. Two and a half gold per kill. <laughs> Yeah. It's worse than Brulings. It, it's really, it, uh, considering how strong they are, it, it does feel like it's a bit of a, a bit of a bait. Yeah. But with the uh, the Desso up now on Bowser, they can be fairly scary. They have to use the Soul Blind, and I think this is going to be the first life going fairly quickly here for Bowser. He gets the Ink Soul Sun. How much damage can he do here to the Death Prophet? But the Stampede out, they're going to get the first life for free. Xavier, he wants to come forward. He hits the Dream Call here out onto the Death Prophet. She does have the Yule Scepter up in the air. They do catch out the Ascentor on the sideline. They have enough damage. They burst down one. Can they get the second? They want the Centaur, but he's got so goddamn fast. He has that Blink Bark! The Reverie with the Yules, they do catch out the centre, they're going to get themselves a second trap kill, so that is a lot of gold. I think that was about a 2,000 net worth swing in the way of Darkseid. Oh, I think we're about to see how much, because that was a five-man track here. Yeah. 1,600 gold, 2.5k XP. Um, heads up play from Rev, though. He jaunts forward as much as he can, knowing the Blink's about to come up, just jaunts as quickly as he can, gets the Yules max range. And That's they get a Roche for it, free Roche. Yeah, Split Earth, Desolator, Medallion. And the, the free row The boys. And the boys. The boys are there helping out. I actually love how many games we've seen Wraithking today. It's, I, it's, it's just so I enjoyable. Love, I love seeing this hero. This hero is by far my favourite in the game. Yeah. If anybody wants to, to make their way into my heart, just give me uh, the... I believe it's like the the Frostmourne Wraithking set. I mean, it's probably obsolete to the to the Cache one now, but... It was it was the end all and be all, or even just a, a red Wraith King sword would be. Yeah, would I don't know. Like the, the whenever the, like the new caches come out, I kind of just hate the fact that I see everyone using that skin. I like a bit of like you know a bit of vintage <laughs> on the skins. Like when you're starting to see stuff from like 2014, 2013, you're like, yeah, damn, you know what it's about. <laughs> You've been around for a long. <laughs> They're time. usually trash skins. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> They've gotten a lot better, but it's just that nice little vintage. You're like, yeah, I respect that. All right, so all four banning runes go the way of Darkseid. It is 13k now at 20 minutes into Ooh. the game. Win rate, what do you reckon? What do you reckon? Have a prediction, this, CNC. This has to be 97% to Darkseid. That's a big call. I'm going to go with 88. Oh, oh we are both 70, wrong. 30. Okay, we've really sold out in this <laughs> game. They're playing pretty well to, like, hold the line. Yep. And they've put so much credence on, like, Warlock ult being OP on the high ground. So I guess that's where the 70-30 comes in. I mean, if they do get a nice black hole, it is a good way of dealing with this Wraith King. You know, you can burst. Uh, we've seen. It is fairly easy to, to burst through Bowser. He hasn't gone for this tanky, you know, Radiance into BKB build. He's gone more of the Desolator Blink in the I armor see build. now. Or oh, he's gone the Skelly damage. Yes! Oh, he's going to come forward. He's found it. Oh. <laughs> there was a Warlock there. I guess that's why you go armor Deso, because you almost one-shot a Warlock. Yeah. 
I love this. He's gone the skelly damage. He's probably going to get the double spawning. And he's just going to absolutely just bum rush the base. It's great. I, I mean, love he this. doesn't have to worry about any of the mana burn because the usual suspects are not in this game. Wait. And nobody really builds a diffuser blade. Where is it? Where is it? Click it. Click it. I'm disappointed in Baosu now. He didn't He didn't put him down and he just killed himself. Yeah, and he does lose his first life. He does have still have an Aegis. They're going to come forward. The Dream Call hits out on two. They want to throw out the Ray Fire Blast. And the, uh, the Shuriken comes in as well. They do purge off the track though, so they don't lose all that. MGC, he gets silenced up. He wanted to use the uh, the Black Hole, but I don't think he can. They've lost two already here on the side of Infinity. I think Xavier's going to be the uh, the Martyr Sheep here, but on the sidelines, Baosu comes in with the combination of Reverie. That's a triple kill there for the Wraith King. He's looking for his fourth. He still has another life if he wants to use it. Can he armor toggle his way out of this one? They have He's got him in the now. trees. That's the second life gone here for Baosu. Music has come in though, so he's they, not going to be able again. to survive here for another 80 seconds. He's trying to armor toggle as much as he can, and the crits come through. Do they have enough damage? Yes, they take out the Centaur, but they lose Baosu on the sideline. And as you said, Music has made his rotation. They burn through. The Death Prophet. The only one that is left or alive is the Golem as well as Woody Mo. So he wants to try and come here out onto Reverie. He has uh, good ways of getting out of this. That's still a lot of damage coming out from Woody Mo. Like, he's gone attack damage build as well. He's gone Sanjasha straight into Solar Crest. He really wants to just delay the game. Just make sure he can actually play in every single one of these fights. Which is what you need when you're 15k down 22 minutes in. Like, you've just... Actually, that fight was even. Track really? gold OP. That is too good. Track gold. Too you, you good. even lost that on XP because of that late rotation coming in from music and cleaning up those extra heroes. It's just a long delayed fight. You don't really have the towers to capitalize on it if you're dark sided though. So you've used the Aegis. There's nothing left on the map for you to do but farm. Do they need an Aegis to break the high ground here? Um, I think they just need a few more items. Like you can see here, less track starting to get chubby. He's got his favourite item, the old speed. I, I, I don't think that's a that's a record music, or I'm sorry to say, my friend. It might be a record in this patch, to be honest. It's pretty. No one really built the item. That is true. But either way, Reverie, um, he's just trying to burn <gasps> through some of these creeps. Oh, he's going to go the... Uh, <laughs> he's going the machine gun. Yeah, the machine gun builds. <laughs> it's such a bad build. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> like, the problem... Okay, so basically, for those that are wondering, the machine gun build, as soon as you get 25 your ultimate auto attacks for you. So even if you're in the air, your Yules, your phase shift, anything, it'll keep auto attacking. But it's so trash and unreliable <laughs> that basically you end up missing half the attacks <laughs> and the other half don't even land. Like, so it's just, they don't even go through. Nothing happens. It yeah. just looks great on paper and sucks. I mean, it's a little bit unfortunate, but the audience vote has come in, boys and girls. 85% in the way of Darkseid, and I think the game does prove that as well. So yeah, we're looking we're looking at seventy two twenty eight. Ooh. Oh, the audience is a little bit off for that one, but this is Maybe Dota Plus is wrong. This is fairly dark sided favoured, right? You're gonna need to, to combine extremely well with Infinity Game. You need to make sure that you chain your ultis properly, that you can make sure that uh Bowsley doesn't just get two free allies. But he's gonna come forward here on MGC doing a lot of damage, they're trying to catch out these heroes with the soul blind, and I think Bowsley has been kind of segregated from his team. So first life is going to be a little bit of an interesting one. MGC they're doing a lot of work. He wants to position himself for a good black hole. Reverie is taking out the courier and he's taking out one. He hits the black hole on the two of these cores. Do they have enough damage? Can they take him out? It looks like with the uh, you set up in the air, Reverie's going to keep himself alive for a little bit longer, but it doesn't matter. The double kill comes there for Philo Rules. And this is where Darkseiders start to crumble. They run into this team fight and they don't prepare for the black hole. And MGC, he waited this entire game to get it done. Musica with that Bloodstone regen is getting himself far enough away, but he doesn't. Doesn't yeah. get away. Well, 75... What was it, 85-15? Yes. Yeah. Audience shoot? Yeah, it's, it's probably a lot less now. They've <laughs> just done a big throw. That's a lot of gold. That is a lot of gold going the way of Infinity Gaming. That's what their, their entire draft relied on. They waited until they got to that point where their team fights were scary, where they got that black hole onto the two cores. Oh, Jesus, this is uh, a little bit unfortunate for you. Look at how much damage that gets going on to this Warlock. Eventually, will go down with the Shuriken on top. They do get the dust on the Xavier, but they can't catch up anymore. That's a lot of gold going to Xavier himself. Yeah, it's it's one of those things you're like, oh yeah, it's just a support, and then you realize it's 600 gold. And 600 gold going straight to the bounty. He's getting the solo XP, so he's going to get up to that level 20 where he starts getting the disgusting Donata steal. Yeah. It's like 130 gold, right? Uh, yeah, 36.90, yeah. 
Yeah, look at this team fight. Biasu, he's kind of segregated from his team. He does look like he was trying to get something done on MGC, but unfortunately, weren't able to get it done. Jesus, he does die fairly early on with Reverie on the backside, who does take out the Courier and the Warlock, but the Golem went down. That's the big thing. The fact that the Golem goes down, MGC doesn't die to the burst and was able to go a full duration black hole with a Midnight Pulse on top and getting rid of those heroes, the Dark Side of They decided to crumble. It was, it feels like. They are kind of playing a little bit too much now, and they're being a little bit too segregated. They're not playing 100% yeah, as a they're team. They're just clowning Dota. They, we talk about how well they played as a team in game one, and they're like, you know what? We're going to do the complete opposite for game two. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to play around a little bit here, and uh, Music is going to try and take out this uh, shrine here. So it looked like they did take out the, the free tier three in mid while that fight did go on. The Music are getting himself a little bit more gold towards his team. And yeah. do you I think, think that was the skeletons, building? to be honest. Yeah, maybe it was the skellies. Because he left them there as the fight started, and I just didn't... Didn't even register the fact that, yeah, they're probably going to take them because he's gone that extra damage. 16 skeletons with the two lives, 8 eight by 8 That's a lot of damage. And it's only going to get worse because I think he's got the AC built up now. I want to see him go the double celly spawn and backdoor stuff. Yeah, I think he probably will. Um, considering the, the type of game that he's having, he just has to worry about his, his Wraith Fire Blast and it looks like there was a Rage TP away from somewhere. He's going to clean up the next shrine as well. That's a lot of Diabolic eating. We talked about how much he plays the hero. That's a lot of building damage. That is. Well, they're going to come in here. They have the AC as well, and those buildings do crumble. I think we wait for level 20 before they high ground, but we're getting close. We're getting close. We're almost going to see the 16 Skelly spawn. And that's when they start just deleting these towers, right? That's when Raiki can go by himself. Music but he can actually backdoor T3s. Like, he doesn't need teams. He doesn't need creeps. He straight up backdoors it with his 16 creeps. That is disgusting. And especially because Music can go to the other side of the map as well. You know, just create this split pushing mentality. But oh. I do hear a stampede towards mid lane. They are going to try and take out Music and they do get him down. That's 51 seconds without a Leshrac. Um, Puck's going for another... A black hole committed. Oh, that is a black hole directly on a Puck. Do they have enough to keep him down? He does get the phase shift away. He has the Yules on top as well. Do they have enough? It looks like with the Yules, he doesn't get the drawn away. Oh, he does! Reverie, the Magician, gets himself away. He's TPing away side of the base, <laughs> and he gets away. What Just a heads-up play. Enough. And on the other side, you're seeing Woody Mo. Might get killed here. He is trying to 1v1 out uh, Biasu. But with that open wounds, uh, this Wraith King really cannot fight him at all. In comes the Infest as well, gets himself a decent amount of HP. Um, that's oh. a level 22 lifesteal. They are coming back in, the Blink Hoosomp comes out, Biasu still has another life if he wants to use it. He's going to throw down the Golem, but Puck, he's the one that's getting caught out. He does draw away though. Wraith King with the respawn, coming back in. Woody Mo though, he's just tearing him apart, even with this AC. I don't think he can stand and fight. However, he wants to try and get the kill here on Jesus. And with that illusory orb speed and distance, that travels a long way for him. He's still looking. He's being really greedy here. Reverie could get picked off here. He knows they don't have black hole, so he should be safe. And yeah, he bails out. Still though, like for all this lead we're talking about, they really have invested in some questionable items. So that 16k net worth like, looks good on paper, and then you realize half of that is invested in items that really don't help your team. Yeah, well, it looks like on the backside they want to try and take out the Centaur, and Xavier's the one that picks that up. So they've gotten rid of one. They blink forward. Nice little rage there by Woody Mo. This is where they start pushing in, right? You know, uh, I'm sure Baosu has a decent amount of skeletons. Actually, no, he doesn't. Oh, the poor guy. He's empty. Empty. Only He's one. running on empty. But this is when they can start moving into to the base, right? But it looks like the side of Dark Side, they're just going to leave. We're going to go back to farming. Oh, he went the No Reincarnation Mana cost. He actually didn't go Weak. to Weak. Weakling. Honestly... He got my hopes up, and he's he's absolutely spoiled. I hope they lose now, to be honest. <laughs> you can't. I'm, I'm, I'm all for parody, but you I hope they lose. You can't say that. You have to be as unbiased as possible. You have to be no, I was unbiased till he didn't go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the Roshan spawning now in front of the face of Dark, so they're going to be able to pick it up. I believe the Aegis will go in the pocket of Baosu. Uh, you know, he's going to get the cheese. It. They're going to give it to Reverie. I guess you know that means that he can get Black Hole too. It doesn't matter. He's also walking around with armor completely turned on. Uh, yes. There we go. <laughs> so he holds it on until the creeps get there and then turns it off. We're good to go. Well, with this Aegis, do they try and push high ground now? I either? think you might as well. Like, There's no downside to trying. You've got two lives on two heroes. If you can get a pick off, that's probably better. But this is not the hero you're going to pick off. You have to, unless you get a silence off. Oh, he jumps in. They do get the silence out as well, but they miss the uh, split earth. So he's just going to be able to rage himself away. Do they have a way of breaking this tether? Looks like they do. So, 
Woodymo, he still does have a TP to get himself away, but I think now with his Rage on cooldown... Oh, he jukes him up! Woody? They have found him out! They do have the Phantoms Embrace coming here out on the last hill. You'll have to come up, so there's no silence when he comes back down, but a silence from the puck is what they get instead. Do they have a way of catching out Woodymo? He gets the CP, the Rage and the TP away. They have no way of stopping it. Woodymo, talk about breaking some ankles, talk about wasting some time. Bowser is one that picks up Jesus in the mid lane. They but do lose Warlock. He didn't commit the ulti. He has the buyback, so that's a win for them, but... Woodymo can't die. He just straight up got ganked by three people. They committed everything, and he didn't die. Yes, he had to commit Stampede to keep him alive, but that's a win. That's an absolute win, comparative to like losing him completely, and he didn't have the buyback. That would have been straight up game. That is true. That certainly would have been two lanes of racks. On the side of Dark Sided. I mean, maybe even three. Like you've got Musica, you've got Bowser. Like that's a quick pushing lineup. Yeah, yeah. He has Deso and, and uh, AC as well, right? They're going to come forward, doing quite a lot of damage here. Woody mode. This last year is starting to chunk apart Bowser, but he falls himself back, get themselves to a situation where they can try and get this team fight off. Yeah, they're just posturing now. They're waiting. They're waiting a lot, and all the spells are back up. I think they're just waiting for Roshan. It's a six six to ten minute spawning. They, they have so, ages still. They're, they're just not doing anything. Like they're waiting for I guess the Ags and the refresher on Roche three because they don't want to fight here. Yeah, it really does look like they're taking this nice and slow and steady. But it's gonna get to a point where Woody is gonna have his own AC. He's probably gonna get an Abyssal Blade a bit later on. That's when he's gonna start being really hard to deal with because we saw that bottom side of the map, it was so hard for them to kill him. So he's completed the AC now, doesn't have buyback. But yeah. look how fast he is. No buyback, 550 movement speed. That's that's a fast boy. He's a real fast boy. So we will have the general AU disconnect here from MGC. We've been pretty good. Like They've only been a couple minutes each time. And like, it gives us a time to relax, register what's happening, um, and just, just realize that despite that it's going down, the game seems more and more playable by the minute for Infinity. Like, when we were talking on the 15-minute mark, we just said, the game's over. Like, the game just should have just been done and dusted then. Infinity has stayed in it. They've kept their cool. They've kept composed. They've found the picks when they needed to. Woodymo has the farm to keep up. He does do quite a lot of damage yeah. to Bowser as well, but I'm just trying to, 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 to think of the trigger point here for Darkseid. When do they get to the point where they feel confident going high again? I think they're waiting for Machine Gun. Like, honestly. Like, I know I know, I hated the build, but I, the way he's built, he's going for a Daedalus next. He's waiting for the Machine Gun to go high ground and realise it's a sack. It's just a bad build. I just don't, <sighs> I don't like... I know I'm meant to be objective and nice and all that. I just, it's, I just don't think it's worth it. <laughs> I think it's I think it's fairly bad as well. Like, cause at f if you're getting 420 GPM, you can give your entire team moonshots. Like, even yeah. supports get that extra little range. Like, people forget it gives night range. Still. Yeah. Um, you can give yourself Ag Synth, you can give yourself Hex, Octarine, and you can just be an absolute beast. And you don't need to farm anymore. So supports can farm the jungle. Supports can farm the lane. Or you can just double down and be greedy and do both. Yeah, well, they're trying um. to pressure Woody Mo here. Do they just try and get this split push front going on? You know, you put Musica towards one lane, you get Reverie to pu push out the other lane, and then you send Biasi towards mid, he drops his skellies, he tries to chop down while they're focusing on these other two lanes? That's basically what they've done, but they just haven't committed. They've sent the creeps in everywhere. They're doing a slight bit of damage here and there. They're just really not in any rush. I mean, they look pretty passive, but I do hear a Stampede coming towards bottom. It looks like they found out Musica. Bowser, he's walking in here, but he's walking into his death. It looks like it. He's trying to armor toggle, but he armor toggles the wrong way. He has lost his first life. Musica does buy back in here. Revy gets in with a nice little dream call, but they still have the black hole at the ready. MGC, he needs to use it, but the Soulbind comes out, out with the science as well. The BKB comes out from the Enigma with the Golem going down. They're not doing all too much, so both of these teams kind of just ducking in and out, weaving and trying to get to the best position in these team fights. So with the Golem on cooldown now, with the Stampede as well, Maybe this is go time for Darkseid. They don't have the BKB on the Wraith King. Yeah, and they Wraith, did buy back Wraith on King's Musica. gone. He's gone for an absolute run. He wants to get these skeletons back up. He doesn't want to be a part of this. And he's kept the Midas in the backpack as well. So he's just... He's worried he's going to get ganked. Well, it looks like towards mid lane, they're going to try and get the kill key out onto Xavier, and they do. So they take out the uh, the Bounty Hunter here. Nice little sights as well as the Orb forward. Doing a little bit of work on Reverie, but he's inside the back lines. He's inside the base of uh, Infinity Gaming. Does he Tops. get out? Yeah, he, he's going to get out. Well, Tobbs did, did get hoosed on towards mid. They throw out a uh, Ray Fire Blast, but it doesn't matter. Because Woodymo is the one that does all the damage. Yeah, they're starting to throw. It's getting it's getting closer and closer by the minute. That was a big fight for Infinity. They basically did that perfectly. They didn't lose any damage on any of their towers. And they kind of cleaned house. Like, 
They didn't have to use the black hole either. Didn't have to use the exorcism. I think they tried. <laughs> I think they really yeah. tried to get that black hole off, but he just couldn't get into a position to actually hit anyone. Um, yeah. Well, he has that Blink Dagger up now as well, so Blink BKB Black Hole is the way to go here for yeah. Infinity Game. And they are behind by 20,000 gold, but it surely doesn't feel like it. No Blink until he gets that courier. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the 20k sounds like a lot until you register the fact it's a bounty hunter. It's always going to happen with a lot of gold. And as long as you have a, like a super solid team, and obviously this life still is basically unkillable. Yeah, he is They just don't have the magic boy. damage to deal with him. And he's also so fast that if you don't really lock him down with everything you have, he gets away, he rages, he jumps in a creep and resets the fight, and all of a sudden you're on the downside. Does he go for Abyssal Blade here? Looks like he's going to go for a Deso. Do you think he goes, like, replaces his wand with a Abyssal Blade a bit later? Um, I mean, one's going to go Deso, I guess. There's the Basher? Yeah, there you go. So okay. he's changed his mind. I don't think he needed the Deso at all. Like, they're not worrying about damage right now. They're worrying about sustain and stunlock. Yeah. Because... Reverie just bounces around, does whatever he wants. Bowsu basically comes out of his ultimate and tries to blink away. Deso doesn't stop either of those. Deso doesn't really stop Musica from... He'll probably go a Ghost Scepter or something along those lines just to make himself a bit more sustainable. Yeah. Like an E-Blade would be f fine for him here if he doesn't want to go BKB. Stuff like that, Deso doesn't do anything. That's true. There's only five Bloodstone Charges now for Musica as well. So it looks like they're just going to let the Aegis time out. They have the cheese here on Musica. Yeah, Aegis, Aegis could be back in two minutes. Like They just they let it time out. Yeah. They didn't do anything with Rev. Um, Maybe anyway. Reverie is not the hero to be putting it on then. Well, the thing is, the people oh, that died... Oh, he choked died, that really hard. Yeah. The people <laughs> that died during that five minutes were all supports. True. So, like, I think the only way they're dying is getting picked off. And they'll probably die twice, because they can't really Oh, speaking out. of being picked off, they do have the Blink. They do come out with the Infest on top of Biasu. Can they chunk him down in the first life? Yes, they do. They have MGC sitting on the sidelines as well. He has an Arcane Rune with that Black Hole if he wants to come in. He's going to come in with the Golem and the Black Hole! They've hit on the two heroes going out here from Dark Side. And do they have the damage? Yes, they do. They've burst through Musica, and he doesn't have any buyback. But this is a beautiful Dream Core coming out from Reverie, keeping them at bay. And I think is going to blink himself away. They don't have the damage to get rid of him and so there was a beautiful black hole coming from MGC they clean up one but they don't clean up the, the second life of Baosu but I don't think this matters because they're going to be able to push in Reverie is pushing towards that bottom side of the map does he have enough to get away I think he does don't you know he's getting caught oh. out they have to use the Yule Scepter up do they have the signs looks like with that orb speed he's going to be able to get himself away yeah there's, there's almost no way you ever catch someone 1v1 if you're a puck like there's no way you kill him yeah. you don't have enough stuns you don't have a hex or anything along those lines you're going for the Shivers, which is safe, smart place. Looks but like mid lane, they are pushing in here. Infinity Gaming, will they be able to get their first tier 3 tower of the game? Woody Mo is the big boy on the block. He's doing quite a lot of work right now. They do get the silence out as well. Quite a lot of work. They're going to get rid of that golem early on. So is the one that wants to come forward. The Hoofstomp is getting pumped faked in. But Biasu, he still has his uh, reincarnate. So if this goes down, it doesn't matter. They do have filler rules coming in. He has that exorcism, which he just popped right now. They're going to come back in. They don't have the black hole here. So Biasu, how much damage can he do? How much work can he do in this uh, BKB? They're doing so much work towards filler rules. And they take him down. Biasu, though, he needs to use this armor toggle to the best of his ability. But it doesn't look like he can. He goes down. There's no buyback on the side of Biasu either. And if they can pick up Reverie, this is big for them. The Yule Scepter comes up from the puck. Does he keep himself in? the air for long enough. He is just shooting and jiving away, and he gets the blink all the way down as well. He's going to use the orb all the way back up to his base, and he's okay. But Woody Mo, he's just run back inside of the base. He wants to get rid of Xavier, but with the ink swirl, he has to get himself away. Fantastic doesn't get the blink on top of the park. So Musica, he has respawned, but they don't have Bowsy for another 60 seconds. <laughs> Infinity are doing it, and Infinity are actually doing this. They're keeping the game alive, despite the fact they're 25k net worth. Oh, Xavier, he wants to get the kill here on Fantastic, but the black hole comes in from MGC, and he takes Musica to the grave one more time, and they do have buyback here on Xavier, but I don't think it matters. Reveries is trying to do what he can to get rid of these creeps, but I don't think it matters he because Woody Mo is the one that's chunking down these towers. Yeah, you get rid of the Centaur, but is it enough? Is it enough to hold your base? here dark sided you need more from this out comes the dream call and the rapid fire i mean rapid fire is what you could say but he doesn't hit all too hard doesn't hit all too fast either woody mo with the rage forward comes in he's chunking down tobs can he get on top of this grimstroke it doesn't look like he can woody mo he needs to get himself outside of this base now because his rage is starting to wear off xavier is looking for him on the bounty hunter he just gets the track out but with 550 moves but i don't think you're really catching up to this last stealer so that rapid fire looked really hot yeah it looks so <laughs> strong can't believe how much damage that one did. Yeah, I shouldn't it was... be so salty, but honestly, it's the biggest bait 25 I've seen. It, it, 
It, it says rapid fire, but it doesn't actually increase his attack speed. No, no, so it doesn't matter what your attack speed is. It's just one per second. Okay. Coming out because it comes out of the actual ultimate, basically. So you can cut. You can go out of it. There's an AOE. I'm not sure they just patched it. I think it might be like a 600 radius away from the ultimate. Where it'll just throw at one per second. Your auto attack. You have to have like three rapiers and a daedalus to make it worth it. Okay. I mean, he's got a daedalus now. Going MKB. Yeah, it's just, it's just not, it's not a good item. Look at this black hole coming out from MGC. This is, ever since he's picked up this BKB, he's hit two black holes back to back where they've taken out Musica. Yeah. And this is what they need to do. This is how they lock down this light, the, uh, the Leshrac. And, you know, obviously Reverie was able to get the kill onto the Centaur in the back lines, but it didn't mean all too much to the grand scheme of things. Yeah. I mean, the big thing is all these fights are happening. It's still 20k net worth. Like, they're having these huge fight wins, but... The net worth is not showing it at all. Like, the XP's pretty much tapered off at 10k. But Infinity is just doing so much more with what they've been given. And Woodymo has capped, though. That is the problem you're going to find. He's only got extra room for... He's going to trade out that Midas for another item. I'm not sure what it'll be. It could be a Scardi. It could be just another tank item. It could butterfly? honestly... I mean, Butterfly's pretty solid, but right now he can't die. So the Butterfly is not... Overly needed. A nullifier could be good. Mm. Yeah, Pretty I could good. see nullifier being really good against the puck. Um, obviously, moon even shards. bloodthorn. What about bloodthorn? Oh, I, that could be good. I feel like bloodthorn would be really oh. good. Um, he actually has a bit to go. He's got the moon shards. He's got the ag synth. He's got the trade out, and he is committing to this deso, I guess. You know what would be a cool play? If he ag synths himself, and then he eats the enigma. He goes in and baits. The enigma pops out. BKB black hole kills everyone. That would be pretty hot, but the chances of coming out as the Enigma and just stunning yourself, like just some AoE stun hits you on the sideline, would be pretty embarrassing. Yeah, that would be pretty funny. But the, the smoke comes out now. Here from Infinity, Woodymo has jumped inside of the Centaur. They are looking for some of these dark sided heroes. If we have a look at the buyback status, oh. see who does have buyback. So it looks like... Uh, Three of the cores coming out from the side of Dark Side have it, and Tobbs will have it in about 700 gold. So Yeah. Enigma has has it and Centaur. But, like, Centaur, if he doesn't have the ultimate up, he's he's kind of useless at the moment. Like, he hasn't hit that point where he's unkillable, like we saw with Godot. He still very much can get exploded. That is true. So, K-tastic. Well, was looking for a kill. Has that freshly picked up Agony Scepter as well. So this uh, Stampede will do quite a lot of work for yeah. them. And he's gone with the strength. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets the retaliation aura, to be honest. Why do you? Why did he go base damage over the? I mean, <laughs> strength. Base damage is fine. Neither of those. Neither of those are actually very good. I mean, it's better than the base damage. Eh. Thirty base damage is really neg negligible. Well, that's the thing. Like, if you if you all in on strength, that double strength, the double edge is strong. But he's not really getting it off much at all. I mean, yeah, I understand that. Well, it looks like the uh, Dark Soda boys are going to get themselves a Roshan. That is the refresher, refresher shard. shard. That is big for them that they were the ones that picked that up. Who gets the refresher uh, shard? I guess Puck with the... Uh, uh, <laughs> with the Ram Gun, Ram Coil! <laughs> Oh, it looks like they've caught out one, though. So, Bowser has to use his first live to the best of his ability. They have caught out the life sealer with the sun out and Sans on top. Can they take out Woody Bo? They do. He's dead for 100 seconds. He has no buyback. The Golem does a little bit of work, but not enough. Yeah, and Musica, he's chasing forward. He wants to get this MJC kill. If they take out this Enigma, this is big. He's going to use that BKB. He gets himself away. Can he get the TP away? Do they away have something? Yes, they do. Bash. With the bash. Oh. Bowser sends him back to the grave, and they've taken out four, and they want to get the fifth. And we thought the Dark Side were on the back foot, but after that Roshan kill and after that big pick off of Woody Mo, they're the ones that are going to be charging what? forward looking for a, a new line of racks. That's, oh, that's unfortunate. If you're an Infinity Gaming fan, you can look at that and be like, oh my god, we were so close. And then a one Roshite pit actually just obliterated your chances. That's six seconds down, that's two racks at least, if not Megas. It's a shame. He's only 200 gold away as well, so if anyone had a fallen there on Dark Side, he would have had enough of buyback and they could have fought again. That is true. Just the beautiful chain stuns coming out from Darkseid and being able to keep the life stealer at bay before he gets that rage off. And now look at the buildings fall. Darkseid, they've walked inside of the base. They have more than enough damage to take down these buildings. They want to try and get Katastic because he's the one that bought back in this fight. Philo rules, what can you do? This is where you need to stand up on the uh, Death Prophet. 
Can he get anything He's got done? the Exorcism, he's got the Ags. He hasn't got the Shivers though, so he won't be able to actually just full-blown tank up. Oh, he uses the Exorcism, but the Yules comes up in the air. The BKB comes out. Biasu, how much damage can you do? Out comes the Refresher Orb from the puck. He's doing a little bit of work with this Rapid Fire. I don't think it's doing all too much, but out comes the Soulbind on top. They've taken out the Death Prophet. They've taken out Katastic, and that's everybody dead. They've lost the Warlock. Can they do anything with this Refresher Orb? Oh. He has two Black Holes, and Woody Mo is up in three seconds. He's going to jump inside of the Enigma. This is where it all works out. They've already lost everything. The black hole! It hits onto nobody! MGC, you've only got Revry. He needs to use the second one. He comes back in with the black hole. Oh, he hits one. onto another one, but it is only the bounty hunter. They come in here out on a bounce who does get the respawn, but I don't think that's enough. MGC, you tried your hardest, my friend, but unfortunately Infinity Gaming, they lose to a Roche fight, and that's it. Darksider will be able to take the 2-0 here against Infinity Gaming. It was a valiant effort, but unfortunately it all crumbled in front of them. Yeah, I mean, you got to give them props. Infinity Gaming had no right being that close to a winning game, 30k down. Yep. They were so far behind, they were struggling. Darksiders just really showed their hand, though. They really showed that they're capable of, quite honestly, throwing, and they're, they're capable of just clowning a game against a team that could really take it to them. Yeah, it did feel like Darksiders were kind of toying with their food a bit. We saw with Reverie's build, it was a little bit unorthodox. He was going for the uh, Dream Call Rapid Fire, which, I mean, it, it looked What bad. a fantastic, a fantastic level 20 might. I mean, I feel like if you went any other build, that game could have ended a lot earlier. You know, maybe Probably. if you went for something like a Blink Hex Shiva's build or something like that. But either way, Darksided do come out with a win. But, you know, props to Infinity Game, and they brought it back against a side like Darksided. They were down 30k, but it certainly didn't feel like it, right? Yeah, I mean, that 30k almost seemed negligible. I don't. It wasn't even just the items that were purchased. Like Infinity Gaming were just using their gold so well. Woody Mo was uh, kind of a bit behind on the the core. Like he was kind of a bit behind on the Wraith King. But every single time he'd put it to him in the fight, he'd be like, you know what? I have a nine second rage. I don't count. I'm just going to keep fighting. It is a shame. The one time he doesn't get the rage off properly, they die in the Roche pit, and that was all she wrote, really. I mean, that's how it kind of feels when you have this end all and be all raid boss of a pos one, right? Yeah, for he sure. Get, he gets caught out once. He doesn't have buyback. He bought all out for that abyssal blade, and unfortunately, he just didn't get that rage off. But you know, Infinity Gaming, they must be feeling good about this. You know, they're going to go drop down to the lower brackets, so they have another chance of coming back into this uh, stage one. But is there much they need to change here for for Infinity Gaming to get you know that um, next step? I mean, that game too is an example of like how well they can play as a team. I think they need to focus on the lane now. Like both games showed that they kind of lost out in the lanes quite a bit. Like their laning presence wasn't there, so their ganks need to be there. They need to pick a pos four, pos five that can actually gank. With this warlock, it looked so solid, but it just led to this window where they were so far behind that the ha the warlock had to be perfect. He had to get massive ultimates, had to get massive bonds off, and you never want to be in that position. Like you never want to have to have a four man anything. Yeah, well, after that series win of Darkseid, we'll have to have a look at how our bracket did unfold for today. So if you guys didn't catch this uh, earlier series, shame on you because it was an absolute ripper. Darksided taking, I mean, not Darkseid, a shutdown took two <laughs> games up against Flashpoint in an absolute crazy best of three, two hour long games, and that was ridiculous to see. So shutdown, they'll be moving forward up against Atletico and Darkseid are taking a convincing 2-0 here against Infinity Gaming. They will be taking on Zen 9 tomorrow and that's going to be an absolute ripper. You know, Flashpoint Gaming and Infinity Gaming, they they are not out of this tournament just yet. They're going to drop towards the lower bracket where you can see down there where they will be playing the losers of either Atletico and uh, Shutdown and Zen9 and Darksiders. So they will have a redemption yeah. arc coming back into this tournament. But, I mean, how are we thinking about those games tomorrow, Woggy? I'm hyped to see. Because, like, obviously Atletico and Zen9 have had the benefit of watching these games. Yep. And they've realized, like, these other four teams, they're close. Like, they're real close. There's not just a huge skill gap anymore. They can actually play Dota. They can play real, real nice Dota. Well-rounded drafts. And I think it might be a lot closer than we think for both of those series. Yeah, especially because Shutdown, they have Nova coming back into their roster now. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to play today, so they had to use the CNN of Cozzy. But Nova being able to come back into that offlane role does provide him a little bit more stability, does play those more kind of traditional offlaners. Yeah. I mean, no slot on Cozzy today. He played fantastic yeah. Dota. Like, I don't even know. When you say Nova's going to be better, like, I honestly don't know Go.3, Cozzy 4 versus Nova 3, Go.4. Go. I reckon it'd be close as a as a two on two kind of thing. It would be super close skill wise. Well, after today, we do have our Dare Ice Coffee MVP of the day, and boy howdy, was he a player! Corrosive 
coming in from Flashpoint Gaming. Unfortunately, he didn't get the win today, but watch this. He 100 to 0 is the enemy carry, and he's supposed to be the offlaner. Yeah. I mean, Corrosive, he played Magical today. Unfortunately, he didn't get the win, but... He got this win. <laughs> he got this win. He put the team on his back game two and game three. It wasn't enough game three, but honestly... He put on a performance that I'm going to remember for quite a while. Like, look at this. He's just dominating everyone. Yeah, and this game wasn't always in their favor either. You know, Flashpoint, they got to a point where they're like, okay, Corrosive, we need you to get this Agony Scepter. We need you to win the game. And he did it for them. And we see here, just unfortunately, just didn't end the way that they needed to in this game. They eventually did win it. Yeah. But, you know, getting that third game where he did play that Sand King, he played phenomenal on, the, on that hero as well. And... Man, him playing these off lanes, you know, he kind of bounces around between support and off lane. But if this is how he plays off lane, man. I'm excited yeah. for the rest of Flashpoint. Uh, honestly, and the worst thing is now you have to ban an off lane morphling. Do you know how much that hurts to hear? <laughs> you have to like, oh, I have to ban this really bad off lane because he can play it well. I mean, and he plays all the other offlaners well as well. You know, yeah. he played that Sand King, he played Centaur as well. And man, if this is how good Flashpoint are after recently losing Hype Man to Shutdown, then, you know, their lower bracket run could be quite strong as well. Yeah, I mean, once they have a few more days practice to see how it's going to happen with whatever carry they choose, I'm not sure if Cut and Paste is going to actually permanently be with them. I'm not sure why not, because he played pretty well today. Um, once they get a bit of practice behind their legs, they're going to be so strong. Like, they lost Hype Man... <laughs> last night. <laughs> like literally 11.45 last night. <laughs> it was a little bit hard for them to, to lose their pause one, but you know, after seeing both these teams drop down to the lower bracket, obviously Infinity, they're, they're the, one of the weaker teams that's coming into this yeah. stage one, and obviously they have to play the loser of the uh, Zen 9 and the Dark Sided game, so they could potentially go back up against Dark Sided and Zen 9 if they do drop down towards there. So how are you feeling about how these both, both these other two teams are going to be going towards the lower bracket? Um, I think they're going to be fine. Like they played good Dota. At the end of the day, like if you lose a tournament because someone's better than you, you're going to live with it. If you lose a tournament because you straight up bombed out, that's depressing. But they're playing strong Dota. They're getting better every week, and honestly, they're putting a good performance against some of the teams that they really had no right versing. Like they they're unpracticed, they're unseasoned, and they're doing such a good job. And that's that's the part you have to take away from it. I mean, it's going to be scary to some of these other teams that drop in a lower bracket, right? Especially with how Flashpoint have been playing. You know, they almost took the series here against Shutdown, who yeah. arguably is, you know, top two, top three team in Australia right now. And it feels like if Flashpoint can start playing this consistent, especially if they bring in a new pos one as well and practice with them, that's going to be scary to any team dropping in the lower yeah, bracket. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be in that low bracket right now. I mean, you might have a second chance in stage two, but you, you, want, to really, you want to really get at stage one so you can watch how it unfolds. And like, who knows how it's going to happen in that lower bracket. It could be a disaster for everyone. Yeah, who knows indeed. But that is it from us here in the studio. It's been a great day one here for Season 4, Stage 1. It looks like the boys of Shutdown took a crazy best of three, and the boys of Darkseid have make a convincing 2-0. Make sure you guys are back here same time tomorrow, Sunday, 2pm, to see the rest of the action.
Remember where it started. Your first experiences. Remember where you came from. The journey you traveled. The journey you love. Remember where it started. And imagine where it will go. Rise on. Mr. Murray, have you decided on a name? We're thinking Callum. <laughs> this is Callum Murray. <laughs> Callum Murray to the seafood aisle. Callum Murray, why'd they name you that? <laughs> I take you. Callum Murray. <laughs> Let's make it Jack. Drink it through with Dare Ice Coffee.